discus. The huge suplex. And if you miss anything, of course, you can watch it there on those sites as well. But download the Roku channel, uh, the Roku system, and download the WWDB TV channel, and all the shows are there. Jennifer is echoing that as well, Mr. Producer. So we'll just keep going for now at the moment. I wonder if it works on flip phones. I don't know. You want to take yours out and find, and find out? <laughs> Up and go get it. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Sure. Also, get a little get a little tinfoil on the antenna. And uh so um oh sound is back. Thank you, Jennifer. Appreciate all right, that. Man. All right, we are up and running even without the flip phone. Uh, <laughs> so as always, Mr. Mott, Mr. Mott, Mr. Mr. Matt, Mr. Mott, boy, oh boy. <laughs> Woo! Take two. Uh how's your week? <laughs> it was good just dealing with all the knuckleheads on Fremont Street and See? flip phone. I love it. He wasn't kidding. Yeah, he's got the real thing. <laughs> That's awesome. Jethro Gibbs is going to bring a rotary phone next time. <laughs> Wait, if the cord was long enough, who knows? 2003 is calling. That's right. <laughs> Two cans in the string. That's right. <laughs> Chief, how was your week, sir? Outstanding. Excellent. I'm healing very well. Any news yet on that stuff? Uh, the biopsies were negative. Excellent. Good to hear. Good to hear. Good to hear. Right. Excellent. Yeah. So very good. Very good, good. Good. And of course, everybody out there, again, we appreciate you taking time with us today. By the way, as I promised last week, if you go to the Thoughts Count Anywhere Facebook page, I did post the picture of the hieroglyphics which with, with which our historian, Mr. Burnett, was trying to write here on the table. You mean the chicken scratch. There were some responses. <laughs> Um, one, I think, was a legitimate attempt at a response. Yes. The others were just kind of having some fun, which is okay, too. So keep them coming. If you go to the TCA page, uh, you will be able to see the picture, put your thoughts in there, and some of the good ones we'll share along the way. And we, we should have posted to the fact that, like, put wrong answers only just to see what people I, I, You know what? I thought about that, but of all the responses that are there, there's only one that is somewhat legitimate. The rest are wrong answers. So... <laughs> And the, and the only other thing we worry about, Thomas, we hope you're cleaning aisles up today. That's right. Chocolate syrup and all I hope that somebody good stuff. throws a bunch of frozen peas at you. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jennifer, the teacher that she is, kindergarten teacher out in Hawaii, looking at the clip in the picture, the first thing she noticed, she noticed the interesting pen grip with which our historian uses. He like pretty much holds it like a like a club. So he needs a grown up. We'll he does. See, he does. See. Right. Exactly. It's, that's go. all it is. The Gothic Guru is we here. He will. He will share his insight of wrestling. He's a former wrestler as well. Um, we'll get into that a little bit. But he's also, more importantly, uh, is known as the Gothic Guru because you're a life coach too. I am. I'm an alternative thinking life coach, uh, motivational speaker here in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. uh, and. I'm just really trying to spread a positive message out there. And we'll get into some of the backstory as far as you choose to share. But the sure. important thing is you're helping people. And that's the important part of what we enjoy about folks here in Las Vegas. 
those who extend a helping hand to those who need it. I love the community. Absolutely. All right. So as always, uh, before we get started with our particular uh, rumor segment, listen, it's a fun part of the show. We hope you continue and enjoy it. It is known as... That's your, that's your little whisper thing, buddy. Story time with Matt. <laughs> I faked him out today. <laughs> Story time. No, you that's what he calls it. He fucking you forgot. Do it. It's a man -a! A man -a! A man -a! And now here is your storytelling host, Matt Mullen, the Mr. Rogers of the Fremont Street neighborhood. Take it away, Matt. What's happening in the neighborhood? There was a guy who was, wasn't really anything like too crazy this week. It was too cold for too much stupidity, <laughs> but I was watching I got a call of this guy that was acting suspicious. So I get over there and this guy's like, has like all his workout equipment, like spread out all over Fremont street. And he was like doing pushups and stuff. And I was like, that's the weirdest way I've seen somebody do pushups in forever. And he's just going after all this stuff. And he grabs him and he grabs a lighter and I'm like, hold up. This dude's smoking a crack pipe in between <laughs> freaking sets. <laughs> and there's like the marshals rolled up on him. He ended up getting arrested just because of what he was doing. But it was wild. I'll show you guys the video in a minute. I forgot to send to him because under the canopy. No, it was like right by Dirt Dogs. Okay, <laughs> the ultimate pre-workout. I funny, guess so. you know most people just end up using like uh, five-hour energy yeah. or, or Red Bull or something. But I guess That's but the I guess more it effective, works. quicker way. Apparently, I guess. I business. guess. Wow. I guess um, for sure. Listen, anything goes on. We share these stories more for the lighter side of Las Vegas. We're not trying to put Vegas into any negative spotlight. People know it goes on to Fremont. But since we have a man whose boots are on the ground, so to speak, some of the juicier stories without doing any harm to anybody uh, is what people would like to know about. That so. was actually one of the gentler stories. It, well, yeah, that's had, right. It was. had in a while. Exactly. He did say it was a relatively quiet week. So It was you know. a pretty quiet week. But uh, anyway, all right, let's get to it, guys. We've got a lot to go on. By the way, I just want to remind everybody, the start of hour number two, we have our special guest, Impact Wrestling star Brian Myers, will be joining us live on video. No, not you. Live on video. Um, I have no where he is, literally parts unknown. We want to thank the folks at Impact, Scott and uh, Scott Hosey, our friend, and, and Ross for helping us make that happen. That'll be hour number two. Right. And then until then, let's get started with some rumors, gentlemen. I hear voices. Rumor is one of the reasons for the breakup between Baron Corbin and JBL this week was because Triple H said, it ain't working. It ain't what's best for business. And so JBL, sorry, we're just, we see the, what is that hanging over his head? Is that his hood? You actually yeah. got the video. Jeez. Anyway, Triple H said, it ain't working. It's not what's best for business. So we're done. Thoughts on Baron Corbin in particular. I like the old Baron Corbin with like the cool music and the, like darker side Baron Corbin. He had the long hair. The yeah. lone wolf. Yeah, lone wolf. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the lone wolf version. That was the cool version. Once they started with this happy Corbin nonsense, he's like gone downhill. Like JBL said, it's like polishing a turd at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if JBL's uh, going to take a hiatus from WWE right now. Well, they did say that because of the because of what has happened, that he will be less seen on TV now. Okay. So he will not be as visible on camera. Obviously, they had something in the works between him and Corbin that obviously they had better plans for. But obviously, in the three months since they tried this, it was going nowhere fast. I like the so, old Corbin. The, the original, the lone yes. wolf, right? I, like, I, th I, I think like everybody's Corbin. in agreement yep. with that. Yep, you know, I, sure. love, I love the transition from the lone wolf to happy Corbin when he was like homeless and having the worst luck. And then he finally hit it big in Vegas. Right. You know, I appreciate that. That was my favorite. That was my favorite Corbin. And then he brought on Madcap. To yeah. be kind of his sidekick yeah. and all of that. Um, but it's interesting now because Madcap, he's in the chamber Wonder where he's match, at. right? Exactly. Yeah. He's surpassed, right? Yeah. Exactly. So so good for him. So here's the here's the sixty-eight thousand dollar question. What do you do with, with Corbin now? Do you hide him for a couple of months and and bring back the lone wolf or or do you have to do something with him because he's too good of too good of a performer? Put a mask on him. Okay. <laughs> 
the tallest luchador. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's an interesting. I want to see him come out and be like, "Oh, you think this is polishing a turd?" And kind of like just snaps and starts going after everybody and okay. hits the end of days on anything moving and sort of like a cross. Or Brock Lesnar, the way he destroys better with him <laughs> yeah. too. That'd yeah. be delightful. Brock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so kind of more of a berserk side of him because it's not going the way he wants it. Let's go back to, to the be. darker, more aggressive side. Mm -hmm. Like the berserker. The berserker. That's not kind so of where it's leaning, Corbin. but what's that? Not, not so happy, not so happy Corbin. Corbin. Yeah, there you go. That, that would be a good monitor. Oh, not so Corbin. happy. <laughs> That's right, exactly. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> Rumor is Finn Balor and Edge will actually compete in a Hell in a Cell match at WrestleMania. Thoughts, prayers, who knows for that match? What do you guys think? Is another headline? I mean, do they need another headliner match like that for WrestleMania? Or is this like going to be it for the feud at WrestleMania? You got to remember it's two nights, so they've got to, sure. yeah, they, mm -hmm. have, they have to have matches. Mm -hmm. I, you know, does, one or two. I'm okay with it. Does it need to be in a hell of a, in, in a hell in a cell? I'm not match? mad at it. Okay. Is, is that going to be a winner takes control of Judgment Day kind of a match? <laughs> judgment Day on a pole? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that feud has been going off for a while, so it's yeah, a good way yeah. to end the feud. Mm -hmm. And I also heard the rumor that it might be the Brood Edge versus the Demon Finn Balor. Oh, I hope so. I saw that Which, too. That would be really cool. Just take my money. Here you go. Bring in Gangre movie. Gangrel, a special guest referee or something. Edge's Brood like, entrance is so cool now. Yeah. That, that. When it was like SummerSlam, when it was here, we were like right by the stage. And when I like, they started setting that thing up, and I was like, what are they doing? <laughs> and I saw the thing go down, and I'm like, oh my God, Edge is coming out. Oh, wow. You saw that? I had head? like the coolest pictures of that. And even, I even showed Edge when I saw him after yeah. the thing. He's like, you have to send me those. That is cool. He's That's like, those cool. are better than the ones WWE got. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Sometimes the best shots are better from from uh, the stands location from a fan perspective than the regular photographer. Chief, your thoughts on on that match? What do you think? I think it's good. I want to see it. I want to see it in the cell. Okay. Okay. I want to. See, I want to see some blood and guts. No question right. that can happen for sure, right? In that match, uh, you know, just no toolbox <laughs> <laughs> or red lighting. Let's make it interesting okay. for the fans. Sounds sounds like a plan. Last rumor for Maybe now: table, ladders, and chairs match inside See, the inside ring. Inside the there that would be that would be great stipulation. That would be great. That that would be that I think would would rock. I'm formulating my ideas. I, don't hurt yourself. I'm not. You should go to WCW and throw it in a triple cage. <laughs> oh, there, there you go. go. Oh yeah, or like the war games. On platform, you know, <laughs> like they did years ago. Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. The one the cornet fell off of. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Last rumor we have here is rumors Gunther will not be Brock Lesnar's opponent at WrestleMania. So does that mean they've gotten away from Lesnar and Lashley for WrestleMania now? Or is that going to culminate with uh, um, Chamber coming up that that's done, that they're not going to forward that into WrestleMania between Lashley and Brock? And now Gunther's out there without an opponent, apparently. Wow. Did you I kind of still want to see Cross versus Gunther okay. if it's not Brock. But I really want to see Brock versus Gunther. I think we're going to end up getting stuck with a, like a non-finish at Elimination Chamber. And then we get Brock versus Bobby Lashley at, or Bobby Who yeah. at WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bobby Who. What do you think, James? You know, that'd be a good match, Brock and Gunther. But I'd have a hard time believing that Gunther would be able to like, you know, stand up to Brock. He's, I mean, they're, they're both big guys, but Brock is just so dominating. You know, uh, and Gunther is good. He's just—I don't think he's coming to his own against a guy like Brock yet. Okay, it used to be back in the day, and we we talk about this all the time that the Intercontinental Title was always a title that groomed mm -hmm. the next world champion. But now we have a Universal yeah. One Champion <laughs> thing. But I, what what's your thoughts on Gunther holding the IC belt? I mean, I thought he's been doing a great job with it. You know, he's sort of made it relevant again. What do you guys think about that? Gunther's a tough son of a gun. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think he can stand up to anyone, and I'll, I and I mean anyone in the WWE. I don't think there's a problem there. Okay, so I I, I think Gunther and Brock be a great match. Personally, myself, mm -hmm. I think he's a real good champion and a real good wrestler. I think it's just with him being Intercontinental Champion. I think he's the one that's going to use that as like the boost to get to the main main event picture, but okay. with like Roman being the only champion, 
there's only so many people you can put in the main event picture in one right. time. So right. he's kind of just like right there. Okay. So obviously they have to resolve the belt situation with, with Roman and, and splitting or not splitting and all that argument. Like if they actually again, so. split the two titles, I see him being champion in 2023 at some point. Okay. I think he's a perfect intercontinental champion, but I, I still can't see him quite at heavyweight champion level. I can't see him selling enough merch. I can't see him getting the, the fan base together to really support, like a, at least a long reign as a, as a champion. Okay, interesting point, Chief. Is 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 he making the intercontinental belt more relevant than the U.S. belt right now? Wow, that's a good question. I, I think, in a way, the U.S. belt has a little more relevancy only because of how it's being defended in the next pay-per-view, right? It's being defended in the cage, is it not? Yeah. It's right. The or the elimination chamber, chamber, right? It's being defended there. Correct. Where, um, <clears throat> is Gunther on the card for chamber for a title not or not? Not yet. Not yet. So I think that alone can kind of tell you where the, the belt is and that's role reversal because the U S title never was that stepping stone. That's what, um, so that's, that's a great point. Yeah. And that's also point. that the Romans also on SmackDown where the intercontinental title is. So it is the secondary belt. There you go. And on Monday night raw, that's the only belt. So they pretty much treat that as the <laughs> that's WWE point. championship yeah. is then you get Seth Rollins going after the right. belt and all right. the big guys. That's a great point. That is the only belt on that side. So they have to make that a draw for raw. Uh, to satisfy the channels and the sponsors too. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, I think it's a great point. Up for me, wow! You. Wow, Chi, that's it's he's rubbing off. He's rubbing off. All right, with that, we're gonna. <laughs> I don't want to know what's rubbing off. But anyway, Never that's a whole other time. Get the flip phone. Exactly. Out, right? Anyway, yeah, with that, let us uh, take a quick break. Our first break of the morning. You are watching Thoughts Count Anywhere. James Ward, our special guest. We've got a lot to talk about, including Jerry Lawler, and hoping he's doing well. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thoughts count anywhere. Y'all watching it. This is my new tag team partner, Steve O, aka Zeus, from the hit movie Friday and from No Holds Bar. Hello, this is Martin Casals, aka Marty the Moth, and you're watching the Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. Enjoy. <laughs> What's up, man? It's your boy, Seppo Fatu. I'm here with my man, Big Chief. I need you to check out the podcast, Thoughts Count for Anywhere. This is Impact Wrestling's Dash and Chris Bay, the ultimate finesser, former finesse division champion, and you're listening to Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. Hi, I'm Sean Tavari. Listen to Thoughts Count Anywhere for all your wrestling news. One. It's not the worst podcast ever, is it? It's no. the best podcast. Thoughts Count Anywhere, all your wrestling news, all your hobbit you hey, all your gimmickry. Go on over, listen wherever your podcasts are downloaded. The Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. I'm the big LG Doc Ellis. That's my endorsement. Booyah! This is the essential character EC3 on behalf of my dear friends at Thoughts Count Anywhere. The podcast for your mind when you need deep thinking about all things sports and entertainment. Hey, what's going on? This is Axe. And I'm smashing the demolition. Hey, we want to invite you to watch every Saturday morning. Thoughts count anywhere. Hey guys, it's Tessa Blanchard and Ozzy, and you're watching Thoughts Count Anywhere. Ozzy. Ozzy. Hey, Ozzy, what's up, Oz? <laughs> Welcome back to Thoughts Count Anywhere. Matt, Chief Special in Studio Guest James Ward. I'm Aaron Phillips. We are talking wrestling. We went over some rumors now. Probably the big news this past week outside of the ring was, of course, uh, the news that uh, uh, Jerry Lawler had a stroke earlier this week, uh, uh, made national news, actually, as well, because yeah. we know what happened on Raw, how many years ago on live TV that was. Um, yes. Suffered a stroke, apparently. Uh, what's the updates? What's We were talking about during the break, but what, what kind of news can we share that we've seen? I heard he was moved out of the intensive care unit okay. and... They expect him to make a full recovery. He's dealing with a speech therapist and still having trouble on his right side getting around. And I'm sure with like a lot of therapy and all that kind of stuff, he'll bounce back. He's a strong dude. Okay. And, and you know, the people like Jimmy Hart and, and JR, you know, going to visit or talk to him on the telephone, that's got to help him too. Oh, absolutely. That's definitely sure. got to help you. Sure. So. Jerry Lawler is probably, and, and you know, we always ask the question to a lot of our guests, all of our guests about their Mount Rushmore. And I'm very surprised that Lawler's name really doesn't make 
I can't think of anybody that's ever given us his name as part of the Mount Rushmore for them. Um, given what he did in Memphis in the South and bringing all these wrestlers up that are yeah. mainstream, starting probably in the Attitude Era for the most part, coming up through his territory and the people he's taught, not to mention the word puppies and how that became such an important <laughs> part of the vernacular back puppies, in the day. Puppies. But, uh, you know, he's, he's a pretty big institution in wrestling. And I don't know if outside of the normal wrestling genre like us, the casual fan really knows, other than he went after with the, uh, Andy <clears throat> Kaufman back in the day, what he's really meant to wrestling. Especially the younger fans. Yeah. Yeah, most of the casual fans have seen the commentator for Raw. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This the, is a shame. The thing, I think, part of it's got to do with the territories, too. Okay. You know, you you, you look at the people that they mention, Mount Rushmore, okay, mm -hmm. Flair, Hogan, those people. You know, they, they were on the big screens. Right. You know, the New York and the Charlotte area, the Florida. When you get down to the Memphis area, that was a tight area. Sure. That was a small area. The only thing that the only thing that Lawler really did outside of that territory notable is when he won the AWA title. Okay. Okay. Other than that, until he got to WWE, you know, and broadcasting. That's you know when I think he started getting really noticed by, oh, that, and that tells by you, fans, right? And that tells you the strength of WWE, you know, marketing promotion team juggernaut back in the day. For yeah. Linda McMahon did a great job. Yeah, yes. uh, absolutely. And that that's a guy who, like many athletes or entertainers, where they create second and third careers for themselves. You know, where like you said, because of the the commentary stuff, nobody really knew him, but he became part of the WWE machine, and now. You know, he's got this whole other generation, the younger yeah. generation mm -hmm. that knows him from being behind the microphone with JR, yeah. Michael Cole, and all those guys. So it's a whole other legacy. You know, so. as Jerry said many, many times, you know, he's a good, he's a great artist. Right. But if it wasn't for Jackie Fargo mm -hmm. bringing him into Memphis wrestling, mm -hmm. there would be no Jerry Lawler. Right. Everybody has a, where did you start? When you started in, how long, how long did you wrestle? Uh, well, I was in uh, South Texas doing it, training okay. for years with uh, GCW for okay. the longest time. Uh, here at FSW in Vegas, I never okay. got full on wrestling. You know, I had a lot of like personal issues that I was dealing with. Right. But on and off for like two, three years. Where did you – so you got your start in Texas. Yeah, Corpus Christi, Texas. South All Texas. right. And what what was it those you, – you said it right there in your FSW and didn't get full-blown because of other stuff. Yeah. Is that what – precluded you from moving forward into a full-blown wrestling career if you had wanted it absolutely okay you know, everything from paying bills the family issues the personal demons sure, you know sure. it's, it's my biggest regret up to this point but i'm 36 you know ddp didn't get started until he was 36 yeah, exactly there's always there's always still chance. that's right that's right that's that's never say never never say never do you have an itch to get in the ring i do i really do, do. You? are you I training at all are you doing any work just uh, i'm i'm just in, in case good shape right now you know okay. i'm still teaching boxing kickboxing classes so i okay. stay in shape but the idea of getting into the ring is absolutely uh it's big on my mind right now okay yeah uh, interesting if she need a manager i'm good with kendo stick i love it, I love it. <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly that is what chief is known for again a quick shout out uh yeah and ronald yes thank you he is also an exceptional artist you know uh illustrator as well oh, yeah, which yes. you guys touched on uh, as well so um one again shout out to everybody that's listening on the wwdb tv mobile apps thank you for taking us on the go with you all right so Speed, uh, uh, speed recovery to uh, to Jerry Lawler. Um, he is he is uh, um, one in a million in the world of professional wrestling nowadays. Yeah, and of course he's still relevant because he's on the uh, the pre show, uh, the kickoff shows for all the WWE's uh, pay per views or I'm sorry, PLEs, premium live. Events. I've met him a couple of times. It's also really cool to all the fans. Is it? Too. Well, yeah. I just saw Jer I saw Jerry this year out here at. Uh, CAC convention. Oh, really? Yeah, we're a great guy. And you know what? Here's a, here's the great thing. You you look at you look at people when they go to the big cons and things mm -hmm. like that, and mm -hmm. their autographs and everything. Are, right. You know, fifty bucks, sixty. Mm -hmm. What would I give you for uh, Trish Stratus last year? Sixty, I yeah. think, something like that. Mm -hmm. Jerry, I had a old picture of jerry lawler mm -hmm. no uh, no, old one. Old one. <laughs> no uh, way before you were born uh and twenty dollars not bad that's it twenty dollars that that is 
That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. As he said to me, it's about the fan. That's if right. it wasn't for the fan, that's right. none of us would be here. That's right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, real quickly before I move on, there's something going on. Uh, February, uh, what, what is the dates? Uh, February 24th, 5th, and 6th, I believe. Some card show uh, that Saturday and Sunday. I believe we have some info on that, don't we, Chief? Sam's Town Sports Card Toys and Collectibles, Saturday, February 25th, 26th, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., five hours of mission at Sam's Town Hotel and Gambling Hall. Some of the guests on Saturday, Rikishi, Sabu, Willie Gott, and the Royal Hawaiians. Royal Hawaiian, Sonny, and Roxy Esther. And that's it. That's, that's all it. That's all I'm giving out right that's now. It. That's you got to stay tuned in to that's get right. some more. And, of course, Friday night is Impact No Surrender, their, uh, their pay-per-view out at Samstown. We'll go over the matches here momentarily. That'll be a big night. And, of course, Saturday and Sunday night, they have some of their, their TV shows being done there as well. So a uh, big weekend. It's gonna be long Come on weekend. down. By the way, Thoughts Count Anywhere will actually be there doing our show live from Sam's Town from 9 to 11 that day. Really? And, yeah. No way. <laughs> Wake up. Take a note, John, because without you, we can't do this. <laughs> and then from 12 to 1, some guy named uh, Aaron Phillips will be there with his show also from 12 to 1. Continue to talk to some of the wrestlers and people that are there throughout the uh, throughout the weekend. So and come, by, come by Chief's table, buy something, and I'll sign an autograph for you. Do you pay, did they pay Cheap you? Cheap plug. Do they pay you or you pay them to do the autograph? Cheap plug. There you go. <laughs> By the way, speaking of merchandise, uh, at the front of our table, you'll notice some of our merchandise shirts, which you can get at www.thoughtscountanywhere.com. Just go to the shop tab, and uh, these are just some of the shirts that are available. We would appreciate if you support our show by going out there and checking out the shirts. You don't <clears> just don't have to get shirts. Take your favorite logo. You can hit the little drop down next to the uh, T-shirt there, and you see all the different items that you can purchase with our logo on it. So there's just some of the shirts there for your convenience. Chief's uh, favorite radio, watching wrestling on radio is there. Chief's uh, story time, the original, well, not the original, but our current, sorry, current logo and, of course, our TC. By the way, all the designs are put together. Matt does a great job for us on our, on our uh, merch shop page. So, uh, by all means, please go out there and order your favorite merchandise. All right. No, that's move. a cheap plug. That's a cheap <laughs> Well, we're not going to make it cheap because actually John and I talked yesterday after I did the Kiwana show. We we're going to actually put a commercial together for the merchandise. We're going to pull nice. down some picks. We'll write a script. We'll do it. So we're actually going to run a legit commercial <laughs> right. to hopefully get people to the website and check out. Plus, we are also talking about extending to do more things to create more interaction with our fan base. Yep. Uh, you need to make sure you pay attention to our Facebook page. There's going to be a lot of new stuff dropping on there. And I want to thank our newly formed social media team, whose names will remain anonymous. Thank God. Exactly. <laughs> In case you don't like what they have to say, I will protect their identity. If you, well, more or less. They're and on then, probation for a week. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, and then hopefully that may even blossom to maybe a blog page on the website or a vlog, maybe a little bit of both. So there's some new things happening as well down the line to keep you in, informed with us and thoughts count anywhere. All right. The, the other big news coming out on Monday night, probably the, the biggest promo I think that anybody's ever seen or heard it was delivered, at least according to all the wrestling pundits out there, was a promo that was done between Cody and Paul Heyman when it got a little personal when Paul brought up uh, you know, of course, Dusty, and then, of course, made the comment at the end about how his favorite son was Roman and all that sort of stuff. And uh, what were your thoughts on the on the promo? James? I thought that was a fantastic promo. Um, I had been told from all of my friends prior to watching it, they were like, you have to watch this promo and get a chance to watch it live. Whenever I finally saw it, I, I got to admit, Cody threw me off. I thought that he was going to come like hard at Paul Heyman, like burn him. But he gave him that just like just heartfelt compliment. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, and for a moment, I thought that Paul Heyman was going to be a decent human being. But no, that's what no. I get to think of Paul Heyman as a human being. That's God. right. So you never think of Paul Heyman again. <laughs> Chief, what are your thoughts on the promo? It was it, it was great. I mean, okay. it, yeah, it was one of the best segments the whole night. Okay, but if you watch SmackDown last night, mm -hmm. then our boy Mister Heyman uh, kind of sort of went after Cody again, and I was really hoping, you know, a great pop, Cody come out on SmackDown last night, but mm. it never happened. Mm -hmm. So. Well, they also had Sammy there, though, last night on SmackDown, yeah. confronting the Roman thing. And I think that, from what I heard, guys, that, that the promo Monday night was really sort of a defense mechanism against Sammy Zayn 
because they want to keep Cody and that WrestleMania match more relevant than really what's going on with Sammy. Yeah. And that's why I think that promo was done the way that was done out of the gate, having people not forget about the fact that WrestleMania is going to be Cody and Roman thus far. Mm -hmm. Matt? True. It's kind of funny. We saw a walrus cry on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It was yeah. kind of... It was a really good promo. Was, they were both crying, so it was uh, yeah. definitely an emotional thing. Got an mm -hmm. emotional response out of all the fans. Right, right. Everyone was like, oh, my God. It was heartfelt. Oh, absolutely. It when you heartfelt. consider – now, the interesting conversation today on our one millionth favorite show was can Cody take a loss and not have it affect him? And if he were to take a loss, what would that mean in terms of building the story? Because it was said – you only have one shot at redemption in the storyline, and that's this one with him coming back, doing it for Dusty, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that if he doesn't get a belt, that he'll kind of slip back into the position where like a Drew McIntyre is at this point, protected, yeah. but not in the main title picture. What's your thoughts on Cody suffering a loss or not? Can he, can't he? Does he have to win the belt at WrestleMania? I think it would be better for him if he won the belt at WrestleMania. I mean, coming back from that injury, the fact that he actually wrestled that match was mm -hmm. insane. You know, he's got such a great fan base. And for him to come back after that injury and just, you know, win at WrestleMania, it would just be perfect to me. If he had lost that match, I think it would be a long way back, you know, to take it back up to that level. Okay. Guys? For him to be undeniable and uncrowned, he has to, he has to win it at WrestleMania. That's like the ultimate story ending of his – the story he's trying to finish mm -hmm. for him leaving AEW to being like, I always wanted to be WWE champion. I have to do it. Right. Okay. To like come back from that injury, dealing with what he did. And he has to beat Roman at WrestleMania. But I did read something kind of crazy that if Roman walks in WrestleMania is champion, it's like 990 something days as him as champion. Mm -hmm. So will WWE really give up that belt before a thousand days hits? Oh, Good point. They also are talking about coming up with a brand new belt, possibly, if the storyline <clears throat> would have gone down a certain path with maybe Sammy going at it with him at, at WrestleMania, that they were going to create a brand new belt, supposedly, for Cody to win on maybe the first night. A brand new belt, so Cody has a belt uh, to accomplish what he's been talking about. But it seems to be that they've gone away from that. But that then once Cody said story. he was going to bring back the winged eagle belt, I want him to win it 10 times. Right. Yeah. Exactly. 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 Uh, are you firing up for a rant, sir, or uh, are no, we acquiescing? Keep going. Keep going? Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Can, can I can I throw an answer <laughs> yeah, in there? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as I said before, I think it's too soon for Cody to come back and have a championship match. Okay. okay. Personal opinion. Mm -hmm. I think it should have gone – it should go down the road a little bit more, Six another six months, a year. Cody comes – I think as hard as Sami Zayn has worked his butt off mm -hmm. in the last five months, he deserves the shot at WrestleMania, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Are you, is Sami Zayn really a bigger draw than Cody Rhodes? I'm not saying he's a bigger draw. I'm saying he deserves the match <laughs> for watch. what he's yeah. done. Sit back and watch this. Then why would you not put the bigger draw in the match, no matter how long some like our truth's been it's there? It's not forever. about the money. So you're all saying our truth should get a WWE title shot over you don't need to see a our bigger truth. name. You don't need to see our months. truth. He's injured, actually. Yeah. So he is, but he's been there so, forever. So scratch that. Scratch that. Okay. I'm saying Sammy deserves the shot at WrestleMania. Okay. We know what's gonna happen. Okay, let's face it. It's going to be KO and Sammy against the Usos. Okay, we knew when Cody come back, we knew Cody was going to get the shot for the championship belt. Okay, we all knew it as wrestling fans or as marks or whatever you want to call us. We all knew it. All right, I'm saying it's too soon. I'm saying that there's people that have put their time in at WWE that deserve the shot before Cody. That's all. So you were happy when Charlotte won the WWE Women's title, right? I'm done. She was gone for like nine months I don't know and did it in a day. I don't know what he's talking about. I'm throwing it back to you, uh, sir. 
<laughs> oh, I'm, okay. there's no I'm, argument. I'm, I'm, <laughs> no, it's because no I don't, argument's it's dumb. because I don't want to talk about stupidity. <laughs> and I'll leave it's because he knows he's wrong. <laughs> I, I heard duct tape fixes that, by uh, the way. It just me, muffles hey, the noise. Do me a favor. Do not put words in my mouth. <laughs> oh, I, can, I can speak myself. By the way, in case you're wondering, Friday night... Uh, <laughs> God. Impact No Surrender, February 24. There are a couple of matches that are signed, of course. Bruno. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Impact World Championship match. Josh Alexander will take on Rich Swan uh, For the Women's Knockouts World title, the dream match. Masha Slamovich will take on Mickey James. And at the top of the hour, we're going to have a guest, one of the participants in the Fatal 4-Way for the number one contenders match. We're going to see the winner of Eddie Edwards versus Heath into that match steve macklin or rhino one of those two of those four gentlemen will join uh is it pronounced pco or paco i want to get the PCO. PCO. and then of course at the top of the hour the fourth paco? man <laughs> pure cheese onion <laughs> mr brian myers the fourth participant in that triple in that uh, four-way uh will be joining us at the top of the hour and i can't wait to get his take on that match and what's at stake uh in that yes sir and and just so we know on sunday I'll give you a breaking news. Rikishi, Sabu, Sin Bodhi. Congratulations to Sin Bodhi, by the way. And the Royal Hawaiian, Sonny, and Roxy Astor will be signing on Sunday. There you More go. to come. <laughs> so stay tuned. Okay. Uh, rumor has it, and of guess, and of course, I'm just going to say this card's subject to change. Rumor. But as of what we're hearing, rumor. our guest that Saturday, gentlemen, I uh, believe in the uh, uh, first hour sometime, the current Impact Heavyweight Champion, Josh Alexander, who we've spoken to in the past as well, is tentatively scheduled to join us live at Sam's Town. Oh, at Sam's Town. At Sam's Town. And this also is breaking news to me. Yeah, how, come we were, how come we weren't told about this? I know what, high what, people in low places. That's why. <laughs> that's why we have never mind. And then never mind. a second guest who's scheduled to come on, new to impact. Uh oh, say. Dango is scheduled to join us as well. Dirty Dango will be joining us. He's that's, scheduled for at, like next Saturday already. Next Saturday? Yeah. Steve Macklin, then, I think, is coming in on that Saturday. See, I'm throwing names out. I think. Uh, we don't know what the hell he's James Ward will be joining us, too, next week. Who the Let's go. No, no, <laughs> no, but these are names we're hearing. Yeah, Dango should be joining us next week. Next week, right? Macklin, I believe, will be joining us <clears> at <throat> Sam's. Again, these are just the names that I'm hearing are like 98% confirmed. Who knows? More to come. I'm still waiting to hear what's going, what, what guests I may have, hopefully, for Aaron's hour. We shall see. Uh, Ronald says, "Our truth has put in more work than anyone else in WWE. He made everyone believing in air. <laughs> oh, yeah, believing or bellowing air. Listen, the greatest moment our truth had was making Brock Lesnar crack up in the middle of the ring, and that was a bet. Lesnar didn't know about the bet from what I heard, and he was challenged. Our truth was challenged by somebody for twenty bucks or fifty bucks. <laughs> See if you can make Lesnar crack up in the middle of the ring, and sure enough, he did in that one night promo. I don't remember what the topic was, but he got Brock pretty good." Where he had to turn away from the camera. So our truth got over his imaginary friend. That's right, little Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Little Jimmy, right? So, uh, listen, good, it's all good wrestler, though. Who, truth, yeah. You know, when you when you watch his backstory, I mean, he yeah. was a yeah. performer, oh, not yeah. like what we have seen him. Let's see, when did he? Who did he hold the tag title with? It was with Miz, right? That during the that yeah. one stretch, right? Yeah. And really, I think after that, I can't really think of any real serious run. Forget the twenty four seven title <laughs> up and down coast nine, whatever. But he really hasn't had a no. since that tag team title, right? No. I can't you know, think of anything. You know who reminds me of our truth today? Who's that? Kofi. I see a lot of moves Kofi does today. Oh, you're talking about, yeah, athleticism yes. yeah, and his yep. work rate. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, so hopefully our truth is getting better. He was injured. I think it was his knee or something, if I remember, a while back. Hopefully he's on his way to uh, to return as he's well. In, he's in his 50s, our truth Yeah. That's he's mid fifties, I think. Yeah. He's 50, he's got to stick around. Fifty two, I think. He, well, when he's done wrestling, he's, he, older than he's got he's got to stay part of WWE in some fashion, yeah. an ambassador kind of thing or something. Uh, I would think it would also be pretty interesting if he were to become a let's say a teacher down at the performance center, wouldn't it? That'd be a good role for him. You know, our truth. What's that big tall guy's name? Amos. No, not not that big. So it's fifty one. Yeah, yeah, fifty one. See. 
chief knows what he's talking about. Uh, <laughs> One session. Any, anyway, um, uh, the guy, the guy that's the ambassador for WWE now. Yes. Titus O'Neil. Titus O'Neil. Titus O'Neil. Yeah. Titus needs to go down to NX to the training center sure. and, and teach. How, how to, to go slide, under? How to slide yeah. under the ring? <laughs> they, they started showing that again and going into the last uh, last <laughs> rumble. But yeah, listen, he could have been serious and hurt. Thank goodness he wasn't. Yeah. If somebody's going to be a teacher, who'd you rather get a promo class from, Titus O'Neil or our truth <laughs> Who is the, all right, who is the all right, girl? It's all he's got. <laughs> who was the Who was the girl that uh, was in the in the uh, Thirty man, just and what? Oh, that was Chelsea Green, your girl. In and out, when five in seconds. And out, yeah, mm -hmm. right. And that's that, that led was Chelsea. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that, that led I off forgot. this character of being entitled uh, <laughs> that she's now been portraying as well. well if you're not so, going to win yeah. it, might as well set records. There we go. She's had records either way. <laughs> well, if you ain't going to win it, get in and out and get a payday. It's five good. seconds. Uh, <laughs> March 24th, The Undertaker, The Phenom, will be bringing his one-man show here to Vegas on March 24th. I don't think tickets are on sale yet. I think sometime this Valentine's week. Valentine's Day. So they'll be, mm -hmm. uh, they'll be on. So that's going to be crazy at the Cosmo, man. That's I bet that that's going to sell out very quickly, i got to imagine. Uh, then they're selling tickets for a meet and greet, too. My, my, yeah. my source? Your source? Starting at $200. Wow. You can only imagine what it would be like uh, on the aftermarket because we know what what's happening with the aftermarket stuff right now. Oh yeah, but they always skyrocket, and then like the day of the show, it's when you start scooping them up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the meet and greet really going to be expensive. Really. I can only imagine what that's going to be, right? I mean, I I would like the meeting too. I, I really would. Uh, you it would know, be great. It would be great to meet him. You know, I've met him like twice, and he's like legit one of the only people I've ever been like intimidated of. Really? <laughs> well, guys, what? He's like, how are you? I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. By the way, before we go to break, the other couple of matches that thus far are scheduled for Impact uh, on uh, that Friday night six man tag team showdown. Time Machine will take on the Bullet Club. Uh, and then we have. Giselle Shaw will take on Deanna Perrazzo. Uh, our local friend, Jay Vidal, will be uh, there at ringside with Giselle as well. And then um, also Jonathan Gresham will take on Mike Bailey. Those are the current matches right now. But, of course, as always, card subject to change. That's Duke Lawrence, good. good to see you, buddy, in the chat room. As always, we miss you in there, bud. Yeah, come by. I'll give you a kendo stick. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he'll come by just for that, for sure. Um, so with that, Booker T says that the Royal Rumble for sure was his last match. I don't think that's a bad call, No, personally. No. Um, I think he took a spot that was not necessary for somebody else that should have been in there, but that's just me. True. But with that, we're going to step aside for our second break of the hour. This way we get as much in as we can. Give a few minutes for James to talk about what he does, his work as the Gotham Guru. Take it to the top of the hour. We may take a few minute break early there so we can get ready for our guest, Brian Myers. With that, you're watching Thoughts Count Anywhere. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I'm Miss Murder, and I have a question for you. Have you ever explored the beauty and horror? I'm Mercedes M. Yardley, known as Miss Murder. I'm a dark fantasist who wears poisonous flowers in my hair. Among my many titles, I'm the author of the stabby award-winning book titled Apocalyptic Montessa and Nuclear Lulu, A Tale of Atomic Love, as well as winning the prestigious Bram Stoker Award for my novella, Little Dead Red. My short story, Loving You Darkly, also received a Bram Stoker nomination. Check out all of my titles at www.mercedesmyardley.com, where I remind you that all things are dark. Hey everybody, I am Aaron Phillips, you are? I'm Governor Val Brown Klingelhofer. And we host what kind of show? We host the most fabulous show on this network you've ever seen. It's all about Kiwanis and what's going on in our, our different cities. And Kiwanis Connects is the title and you can watch us every Friday morning, 9 to 10 a.m. Pacific time, right on Facebook or WWDB TV. Say goodbye. Bye, everybody. Aloha. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Welcome back. Oh, my gosh. Just so we get back on the funniest flipping line we said, and you can't really straight face it. Uh, we were talking about Santino Morella. Uh, <laughs> bring the Chief's teeth back to home. His teeth are a whole other character. You haven't watched enough of the shows lately, James. But uh, All right, before we get back to our uh, our stuff here, I want to give James a few minutes to talk about what he's what he's done as a Gothic guru, how all that started. 
and how you help people. Let's let's share some stuff. Thank you. Uh, it started in Corpus Christi, Texas. Um, I decided that I my, my biggest passion was helping other people realize their true or true potential and motivating the people around me. Um, I went down to Austin, ended up getting certified as a LCIA certified life coach and a motivational speaker. And I started a movement in Corpus Christi called the Spread the Love Movement. Long story short, I would stand on the side of busy roadways holding a sign, the simple message, you know, smile, don't give up, you've got this. And the ultimate goal was if all it did was help one person get through their day, they see that sign, they smile, you know, gives them that chance to not give up on life, reminds them that they're going to be okay. That's what it started out as. Uh, now I'm a life coach. Uh, and ultimately, I'm, I'm a bad man to your Robin. You know, if you've got dreams, if you're having a hard time for all the kids out there that weren't able to relate to Tony Robbins or the Les Browns, I want to be like the rock and roll Tony Robbins. That's that's the ultimate goal. Do, do you choose to share a little bit of that backstory why you're helping people? I mean, I think it's yeah. important for everybody to know. You didn't just wake up one morning and say, no. that's it. It's great that we do that. We help people. But yeah. I want to put it in context if you don't mind. You know, I was in a really low point since I was a real, real young child. I suffered from uh, manic depression, um, a lot of personal issues and everything. And there are a lot of people that I knew that were fighting with the same issues. I was a, a general or as a manager at a strip club in uh, Corpus Christi, Texas, and I hit I hit rock bottom. You know, I uh, made some really bad decisions and I didn't think that I was ever going to come back up from it. Uh, I ended up going to church. I ended up finding a lot of good support system, you know, a lot of great people around me that brought me back up. And the fact that I came back up from that, I was like, you know what? I don't ever want to feel that again. And more importantly, if I could ever help anybody else not feel that way again, mm -hmm. that's what I want to do. And, and and nowadays, we always talk about this on the show, about how others should always help people regardless. Yeah. Uh, to commit yourself to helping others, having experienced what a lot of other people go through, you can talk to somebody having walked in their shoes. You can. And at a young age, I made the decision to make every single possible mistake that I could on purpose, <laughs> whether it was for everybody else, uh, making bad drug decisions <laughs> or meeting up with uh, the wrong like friendship groups. I wanted to make those horrible decisions. That way, I had life experience on purpose. I didn't want to be a life coach with no life experience, <laughs> right. and I, I underestimated how, how rough the world was out there. <laughs> you went a little honest, too deep on yeah, yeah, right. I, I was in over my head, I was drowning, and it kicked my ass. But I'm back. I'm doing great right yeah, now. Absolutely. You know, I'm still going to make mistakes, but you know what? It's one one step at a time. Well, I think anybody who fools himself into thinking you're never going to make mistakes you're yeah. fooling yourself absolutely uh how can people reach out to you um i am your so if you're on instagram it's your gothic guru uh that's the the main one that i'm operating out of right now uh, i do have a twitter your gothic guru as well uh that's the best option for me right now and for you folks who like haunted stuff yeah. you'll also find them where as Zach Bagans, the Haunted Museum, uh, I'm a lead performer at Zach Bagans, the Haunted Museum. I've been there for three years, so I'm a, a ghost hunting life coach and undead life coach. I, I don't know how that works out. But that's what we're dealing with. Undead, have you ever cured anybody of death? I want to know. No, yeah, <laughs> never say never. <laughs> never no. say never. Exactly. At least you can tell them whatever you want and don't worry about them writing reviews or anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bad Yelp review from the dead yet. That's right. So, so called Ghostbusters. It's fine. That's right. Exactly. Well, good stuff. Definitely, definitely should reach out to uh, to James. He's also awesome. Facebook uh, as well. And if you forget all of that, of course, go back and watch either on Roku, any of the playbacks. But worst case scenario, you can message us through Thoughts Can Anywhere, yep. and we'll be happy to have James get in touch with you as well. Uh, if you need it, he's there for sure. All right, let's get back to it. We yeah. have about you know. Yes, I'm sorry. There's there's a. Uh, um, there's a lot of crazy people in the world, all right. But I've got I, a, I got a favorite saying. You know, I sit between two of them every week. <laughs> but I I got a favorite saying. What's that? One day at a time. I like it. Thank you. It's all we can do. One foot in front of the other most of the time, right? Um, all right. Let's get back to some news and notes. Alexa Bliss is taking time off from WWE after just more or less Again. returning. Yeah. What's up with that? It's your girlfriend. I don't know. She like walked into the place and was like, "All right, I'm done." Going back. So now what does this do with the storyline with yeah. Uncle Howdy and Bri Bray and all that other crap What's now? I don't know. Maybe it's like a WrestleMania thing. I'm hoping we're like, if they say she's going to get involved with Bray Wyatt, maybe they're going to have her like surprise come out at WrestleMania. Oh. Oh. Sorry, it's not fabulous. Mula. <laughs> Nobody cares about she going She's going to take a vacation. That's probably what, going to run around with Ryan Cabrera on that's tour. What, that's what my sources. Well, I was just going to say they got married within the last year. Maybe they're going to try to start having a family or something. I mean, who knows? I mean, right, yeah. I mean you, I, to me, to me, I think the return and to now just hasn't been what I think it should have been. You know, True. You know sometimes though, and, and seriously, we forget 
that they're human beings mm-hmm. yeah. and that mm-hmm. they need to take a break. Mm-hmm. And when th- this type of stuff comes out, we need, we need to step back and say, you know what? Go take a break. Take two or three months off. Relax. Recharge your batteries. Come back better than ever. So and hopefully that's what this oh, is. Hopefully it's just to take a breather for sure. So let's just fast forward and I'll leave this kind of open-ended as a question. <clears throat> How do you then bring her back again? You know what I'm saying? I mean, how do you bring her back? Do you keep her involved in that storyline with Bray and whatever it is? That's going to be an interesting way that creative has to think about to bring her, bring her back. Well, as somebody said, Charlotte Flair can come back <laughs> in one night. Well, why can't uh, why can't Alexa Bliss come back in one night? And well, I'll, just and I'll leave it back, at, and I'll leave it at that. And immediately wins the Raw Women's so title. So there you immediately. are. Immediately, <laughs> SummerSlam 23 will be headlined by Matt and Chief in the middle of the ring uh, <laughs> at Ford Field. <laughs> SummerSlam 2023 later this year has been announced. We'll be at Ford Field in Detroit, Detroit, which will be the first WWE event held there since WrestleMania 23. Motor so City. long time in coming. Good for them. You know where was a good? You know what was a good Matt? Good, good show there. Which one? WrestleMania three. That's right. That's where when, that was when, the largest. When Hogan body slammed Andre the Giant. That's right. Going back, going that's back right. in history, fans. See, that's the good stuff that doesn't get talked about. Hearing all the news in Detroit, I wonder where everyone's going to stay. Like, what's the nearest big city to Detroit? Because no one's going to stay there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure they have better parking next to the stadium, regardless than we have out here for a seventy thousand seat arena. Oh, yeah. But anyway, NXT wrestlers are now allowed to work approved indie shows so some of the fourth wall of forbidden doors opening up maybe through nxt to work some indie shows i wonder, I wonder if that's uh sean michael <clears throat> doings could be and he's been him, ha- him and triple h and he's been having a lot more face time on tv with waller down there so uh, there's also some talk that maybe sean may be donning some boots or something somehow in the ring with some more television time, but right I'm sure. now I heard it's a uh, Booker T's uh, indie promotion. They're allowed to work reality oh, wrestling. Okay. But they said if that goes well, they might extend it out more. Gotcha. And they want to extend it to companies that are good with AEW just to throw Jab that them. dagger in there. <laughs> well, there are enough WWE current stars and past stars, you know, those not active in the ring that have their own school. So if they do were, were to want to keep the indie engagements with in-house, so to speak, there's plenty of WWE. I mean, Seth Rollins has a school, yeah. you know, yeah. Cody um, has a school, Cody has a school. So there's plenty of current yeah. rosters that uh, roster members that have, and their if own they school. want the one that's good with AEW people, the nightmare factory is the one. <laughs> <That's> right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, big turn, uh, toxic attraction finally broke up this past week. Matt, why don't you talk about that? They were on the Bailey's little talk show thing. They did like the Shawn Michaels, Marty Jannetty thing, basically. With one exception. The door d- didn't the, open. Yeah, Gigi's <laughs> face is like messed up after that thing. Oh, I was like, yeah, you yeah. better believe it. At least the glass broke. Uh, At least the glass, or the plexiglass. That was pretty <laughs> rough. She's probably going to need like a week or two to recover from that. But Jeez. it'll turn into a pretty good feud because without Mandy, they had to go with some different of direction. Course, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it was on Ding Dong Hello. Right. <laughs> that was the show. Ding Dong Ditch. Ronda Rousey yeah. returned last night. Are we excited? Oh, yeah. You like I'm Ronda. What do you like I, about I, Ronda? I like everything about Ronda. I'm just going to go ahead and say it like that. <laughs> Ronda Rousey, I like, uh, she, she's fantastic. She's between being an actual true athlete, you know, UFC champion, mm-hmm. everything like that. She brings legitimacy to the uh, the actual ring. Uh, she's And she's doing better on her promos, too. You know, okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all about that. Getting better? Okay. Yeah. I think it's a long time coming that we're seeing Ronda and Shayna come together as a team of sorts. That's a great tag team. Right? I mean, it's been a long time that we've all talked about why are they not together at some point, right? Yeah. Poor EO Sky and Dakota Kai. Right. You know, have to deal with those two at yeah. WrestleMania. Right. And, you know, I really, I really, I really liked you the whole <laughs> show. But I, I, I got to tell you, Ronda Rousey cannot do a promo. <laughs> Period. I was waiting for the Natalia's been there forever well, in the Italian. But she did help out. But she did, make she did win, though. Didn't she win the uh, yeah, uh, she show? Did. Uh, and then she got her crap bat beaten out of her last night with Ronda coming back. She's going to go up to Winnipeg or wherever, to Ontario or whatever. One of those Montreal. Is Montreal. Montreal. Okay. I knew it was one up. <laughs> up there. The Montreal Alouettes. <laughs> the, of the, oh, my gosh. Of the, no, but any, anyway. That's the only thing that's holding Rhonda really back. She cannot do a promo. 
Okay. At least Shana can talk on the mic. <laughs> All right. That's a good point. She's got to work. They both have to work at it. That's she, she's her own call. Well, wait a minute. How many, how many years has, has uh, Ron to been in WWE now? 34, so like four or five. <laughs> a couple, right? I would yeah, say yeah. five. I would, I would think, I mean, you know, I, you guys taught me. I, I can at least talk on the mic now myself. <laughs> you know, it's that's debatable. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, can, I, I at least keep my false teeth in now. Oh my goodness! She's so. about as good on the mic as Roman was at the same time, you know, five years yeah. ago. Yeah, you know, that's that's a great comparison. That's, okay. that's very all right, good. All right, I'll get. I'll Does get back in your good two, graces? Two, two, yeah. No, no, not no, yet. No, 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 you no, went no, from I sucker tried. and suck a task to oh my god, what is he about <laughs> to say? <laughs> <laughs> Reports say Cody Rhodes, Bray Wyatt, Roman Reigns, and Sami Zayn are the top merch sellers currently in WWE. No Where's surprise in any of the names there. there. No, right? there. Yeah. no surprise in those names yeah. for merchandise. Uh, currently, the chamber match is set. U.S. title, Austin Theory versus Rollins, Reed, Priest, Gargano, Montez Ford. The women's match so far, winner will get a shot at Bianca Belair at WrestleMania. Uh, Asuka versus Morgan versus Raquel Rodriguez. Natalia, Nikki Cross, and Carmella. We'll get to our selections, you know, so obviously as we get. What is the date for? For that is it that's one week from today. So it's next Saturday. So next Saturday we'll talk about making our predictions. Yes, sir. We have to go to the bathroom. Yeah, the floor <laughs> recognizes. I uh I, I like to shout out the new color commentator on NXT yeah, level of thank you. Okay. Mr. I know that because I wrote Mr. Blake <laughs> Chadwick. <laughs> okay. For us that know Blake and have had the honor of seeing him out here. In the ring, okay. announcing kudos to him. All right. he. I'm glad he deserves it. Got an opportunity. Now, now, you need to contact him, okay, and find out so you can get started. And I'll leave it at that. And if you want his number, I'll give it to you. Gotcha. To this phone? It, yes. no, to, to this phone. Okay. Uh, He's got a way bigger phone, and he actually see the numbers to it. Serious, seriously, though, I mean, you know, we saw Blake what ROH out here. We seen him, uh, um, the one that even held the belt. That uh, oh, Ring Warriors, Ring Warriors, a couple other ones down in Florida, and we got to go. Yep. Um, okay. I just heard a magical bee beeps. I know well. you need to take off. Yes, so we're going to say goodbye and thank you for thank coming. You so we'll have you come back guys. in. Appreciate Forget you, James it. Ward. You You've got me. the guru. <laughs> Thanks, brother. And, Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, say hi to, you, can, you can say hi to Brian Myers. He's on. He's on. We haven't Brian brought him Myers. up yet, but he, he sees us there. So, all right. Normally, we would take a break. Love you, brother. Uh, at the top of the hour. So you Thanks, can. Guys. Yeah. Thank you, bud, for coming in. We'll chat. Thank you so much. But. We know this gentleman is busy, and I don't want to make sure. I want to take every time that is we he can. Here? He is. I see hey, him in the lower right left hand corner. Hey, he's getting ripped. Well, don't shout at him yet. He's not oh. live yet. John has to bring him in. So <laughs> let me do my like... introduction. So he is courtesy of Impact Wrestling. He'll be here the weekend of the 24th, participating in a pretty big four way match. The soon to be number one contender for yes. the world title. There you go. I am Aaron. That is Chief. That is Matt, Mr. Brian Myers. Thank you for joining us, sir. What's up, boys? Thanks for having, having me. Oh, thank you for joining us. Is that Kiss Demon on the wall behind you there in the upper oh, corner? Come on, that, 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 that's Dan Oh, I'm, listen, the little screen I'm looking at is about two inches big, so I apologize. <laughs> you know, hey, he, Brian, his glasses are so thick he can't see. That's right. They're Coke <laughs> bottles. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Um, obviously, it looks like uh, you're at home, perhaps, which is a rare occurrence for many wrestlers nowadays. Uh, yeah, you're, yeah, you're correct. But, um, as soon as we're done talking here, I got to drive to New Jersey to wrestle powerhouse Hobbs tonight in Rahway. So. In, oh, in Rahway, Rahway, Rahway. That's one town over from where I grew up. Oh, cool. Yeah. I'm right on Rahway. Rahway, Rahway rec center tonight for wrestle pro. Oh my good. I got goosebumps. That's uh, what's his stage promotion. Um, shoot. Well, you'll come up with it. I don't want dead air. So Brian, <laughs> come up with it, Chief. So coming up in No Surrender, let's talk about the big fatal four, uh, four-way match that you have for the number one contendership. Let's talk about that. you got to be pretty jacked about that. Yeah, man. It's been a while. Uh, I feel like I'm very deserving of being the number one contender. It's not going to be easy. You know, a fatal four-way, very unpredictable. But uh, I'm the most professional wrestler, and that, that's just not a you know nickname. That's that's a way of life. So I'm I'm pretty pretty prepared, and uh, you know, Impact has made Sam's Town and Vegas kind of like a 
their new home, if you will. So uh, I'll be very, very comfortable in these uh, chaotic surroundings. And nothing more chaotic than Vegas. Matt, take it away for a question. <laughs> what are your thoughts about Santina Marilla coming into the company? Uh, I think it's great. I think uh, it brings more eyes to impact, you know, a recognizable name, recognizable face, a proven uh, entertainment commodity. Uh, so I'm, I'm all for it. I think it's very cool. Anything's better, anything's better than Scott Demore in every other segment. Make it oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Proven entertainment commodity was very well said. I like that very much. So, um, but yeah, yeah, it's a big opportunity for you. Um, you know, what, one thing we always like to know where everybody kind of gets their start. Who was your main trainer when you got into the business? Yeah, so I was trained by ECW original Mikey Whipwreck. Um, oh, he's, there you go. He's, he's responsible for training me, my, you know, myself, Matt Cardona, Trent Beretta, Tony Nice, uh, Alex Reynolds, Johnny Silver. So he uh, he's done a great job over there. Jay Lethal, I believe, and the, the SATs even. So uh, Mikey doesn't train guys anymore, but I was lucky enough to catch him in that brief window. And uh, he was a fantastic trainer. And honestly, I think he uh, instilled in me like the fundamentals of pro wrestling that have really kept me safe in almost you know 20 years now so uh I'm, I'm forever appreciative for that so the 2300 arena is that correct sir no i'm from long island no the, 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 the long, island. Island. long, yeah. island. long yeah. island what part uh, i grew up in glen cove oh yeah i know where you're yeah. at it's good now do okay. i ask a wrestling question uh, <laughs> who's your favorite wrestler right <laughs> other than yourself who's right your now right now right now uh orange cassidy i think is my favorite wrestler oh that's good all right that's so good. if there's any fans out there that are like iffy on buying tickets to no surrender in the tv tapings why should somebody go to impact at sam's town yeah that's a great question um in my time in impact which are coming up on almost three years which is hard to believe that i've been part of impact for three years it's been awesome they've you know given me a hell of a lot of opportunity to uh kind of spread my wings and do what I want to do and be me and uh, that, you know, I'm always grateful for. But I think the fans sometimes impact gets, uh, especially the modern day impact, which the roster is phenomenal. It's stacked with the, you know, incredible talents. I think impact pays for the sins of the past that none of us, none of us have anything to do with. And I think people just kind of, you know, disregard it in that way without giving it a real chance. So anytime I get a chance to talk about it, I tell people, if you're a real wrestling fan, Go out of your way to watch Impact Wrestling because there's literally something for everybody. Like no matter what style of pro wrestling you're into the most, we we have it all. In fact, it's a pretty stacked roster with a lot of uh, you know, like I said, like a little bit of everything. So um, yeah, unfortunately, we pay for those sins that we have nothing to do with. But we're all working our asses off. I got I got one for you. Are you going to be signing at Sam's Town when you're in town at the end of the month? I believe I'm signing twice, actually, because Impact oh, wow. Wrestling, uh, we're going to be at the Sports Card um, Toys and Collectibles show that's going on all weekend in Samstown. And then also, Impact does meet and greets outside the show. So if you don't want to go to the Sports Cards and Collectibles and meet you know, several talents, you can catch us uh, before and after the shows. There's always meet and greets, and Impact puts out the schedule, full schedules for that as well. Multiple talents will be involved. Right on. And of course, the card show is put on by PowerPlay Sports Collectibles in conjunction with Impact. I want to thank everybody for that. That's in the uh, the major ballroom uh, is, where that will all be at. We will be there doing this show there on the road as well. Thoughts kind of oh, anywhere cool. like down there. So hopefully we'll have a chance to run into you very quickly to say hello again and meet in person. Um, oh, yeah. Matt, next question. With the major wrestling figure podcast and everything, I've been a major mark since day one. Love you guys. <laughs> nice. Thanks, man. Appreciate right. it. With like going to all like these comic cons and stuff, what's like the one thing you're out there looking for? You hope to see at a table to be like, oh my god, I finally found it. Uh, see, so the problem with that is Matt and I are such spoiled brats, and we buy everything we want. It's really <laughs> kind of hard to just you know go, oh wow, look at this, because we have it all. So it has to be a really rare or spectacular item yeah. to really get me going. Where I'm like, oh wow. So it, it that I, I I'm more looking for the un predictability i guess you know what i mean because if it's not target you know i got it it's not a problem you know it's not like yeah uh, so you yeah. do collect wrestling memorabilia yes like yes. everything yes. <laughs> but yes. look what he's got on the wall behind him what is doesn't that answer just a little bit i know that's a not even a probably a pinhead's amount you, of memorabilia you didn't even know it was well, but from here it looks like kiss what i, I, can't, I can't see even, give me your glasses you see it? give me your glasses They're 99. how we say busted opens like our one millionth favorite <laughs> wrestling podcast the yeah. major wrestling figure podcast is my solid number two there you go nice right. what's one what's one then 
us. Oh, okay. That's it. I'm kind <laughs> we, we have to be biased. All right. Um, do you have any other questions? I know since Brian has to hit the road. I don't. I have one yeah. comment. Sure. I can't wait for you to win the championship. I agree. Yes, it's about damn time. There you That's go. Right. Yeah. I've been working my ass off in Impact for almost three years. It's time. Yeah. In the future. Yep. Matt, final question there and our traditional one. Yeah. Pretty much ask the same question to everybody at the end. What's your Mount Rushmore of wrestling? Um, so th there's, you know, this is twofold, like personally, or like who made, who made the most money? What are we talking about? You know, cause there's a lot of ways to look at for impact and no surrender. What's your impact? Oh, impact. Okay. Oh, right. impact. Well, okay. Kurt, no, Angle. Just... Kurt Angle, AJ Styles. Okay. Abyss. Ooh. Ooh. Those are, man, this is tough. And Brian freaking Myers. Yeah, like, you know what? By the time I'm done, the most professional wrestler, Brian Myers. How about that? I got to There you go. Exactly. Exactly right. Again, it's Friday, February 24th. Tickets are available. Samstown mm -hmm. website. That is the No Surrender pay-per-view, Friday the 24th. TV taping Saturday and Sunday. And, of course, Brian will be involved in the number one contender four-way fatal match. Brian, thank you for taking a few minutes with us. We got to let. I want to let you go because you got to hit the road and uh, safe trip. And we safe look, trip to we look forward right. to seeing you in Vegas in a couple of weeks. All right, hell yeah, I'll be there, baby. There it is, How ladies and gentlemen. The most professional wrestler, Mr. Brian Myers, joins us. Thank you, brother. Thank you. All right, with that, we're going to step aside and take our break as we formally get into our second hour. Stick with us. We got a lot more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is John Cena. I just, I just, I just wanted to send you a congratulations on your podcast. Thoughts count anywhere. Because indeed they do. Thoughts are important. I mean, what would they, we do without them? And how can they not count any? Is there a place that thoughts don't count? I can't think of one. Well, I just wanted to say thank you very much. Congratulations and good luck on the podcast. Thoughts count anywhere because they do. Anxiety, depression, PTSD, ADHD, pain, inflammation, dealing with mental or physical health issues or know someone who is? Relax, refresh, recover, revive. Natural health alternatives using hemp-derived CBD and other cannabinoids found in hemp are increasingly becoming more effective in managing various symptoms that affect your body, state of mind, and daily life. Planet Harvest Health's mission is to help those looking for natural, new, and better solutions for a healthier way of life. Specializing in small batch, handcrafted alternatives, providing higher quality and a cost-effective product. Go to planetharvesthealth.com for more information and education on how we can help you. What else is new? Hey, welcome back to Thoughts Count Anywhere, hour number two officially underway. Once again, thank you to Brian Myers for taking time this morning and, of course, the folks over at Impact and, and Scott Hosey for, for helping us make that happen as we lead into the No Surrender pay-per-view in a couple of weeks. That's pretty cool. Hell, yeah, that was really cool. Brian did really put, like, a good point out there. They do pay for, like, the sins of, like, old. If you watch Impact and you're a wrestling fan, that's a really good show. Yeah, it, it has come a long way, and, and sometimes we forget about how hard it is at times to – move on from history you uh, know we forget about that and so far the new the, the new as he said the last three years he's been there yes i think it has come leaps and bounds from leaving all that stuff behind to really being a, a huge powerhouse in the industry you know unfortunately i don't i don't get to see the live broadcast mm -hmm. but i make sure i go to youtube sure and i watch it on youtube mm -hmm. and i'm gonna tell you what they are putting a great product out on the market and it needs to go in my opinion it i hope the company eventually goes to a better network network mm -hmm. i've seen more exposure and they can turn into like the number two three biggest wrestling company in this world yep um i i definitely think i definitely think they're given in my opinion they're giving AEW a good run for their money in the way oh, yeah. in the way they're putting their shows on. Right. Uh, you know, I'm excited for Samstown. I really am. I'm, I'm excited for. They always put on a good weekend of events. Like usually after like two or three days of wrestling, I'm like wrestling out. But well, because not only the, the, we have all the different companies that come in for yes, the big shows. Yes. And you got wrestling. 
Wahoo, yeah, the Wahoo, you know, the Wazoo for all the companies that are here. Yeah, plus events, they right? announced that thing with New Japan, and I really hope like some big New Japan person shows up during the TV tapings to promote that thing, which they did announce one. But if like Will Ospreay or somebody shows up and you're not at Samstown, you're doing this wrestling thing all wrong. Didn't I just see that Jay White lost a match? It was a loser leave Japan match, and Jay White lost it. So he's heading back to the States. I yeah. wonder if Jay could be coming in. Mine. Who knows? Speculation, as they call it, right? I, Speculation. I, I'd like to see Jay wrestle again. He, he's a, he, Rumor has it he knows a couple people in – Every organization, yeah. so hey, well, he's got a foot in the door everywhere. I was going to say, if you've been around long enough, you do know enough people in different places. For sure, he could probably, I don't say write his own check, but could probably knock on a few Pretty doors. Pretty close. Pretty close, yeah. He can certainly write There's his own check. There's members of the Bullet Club everywhere. everywhere exactly. <laughs> Speaking of the Bullet Club, I saw an article that uh, uh, Gallows and Anderson have not been seen on TV because as of right now, they have nothing for them. Yeah. And from what I read, it's written in their contract that if they have, have nothing for them, they don't have to report to the arenas until there is something, yeah. which I thought was interesting. I just read that last night. That's a good way to write a contract. Though. Absolutely. You've been around uh, as long as they have. Um, why not have your own ability to do I that? I think it's called veterans. Uh, yeah, I've been there, done that, right? When you know, when you have it and you traveled and you know your, your, where your time is valuable, why not? Why not have something like That's that? That's kind of crazy. Now that AJ is hurt, they'd have nothing for them, but they have a whole tag division. So that 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 is true on the other side. Are they trying to say that they maybe had plans better for the three of them as the Bullet Club against <laughs> Judgment Day, and they want to hold that till AJ, AJ's healthy again? Probably. I wonder how long AJ's going to be out. Uh, a couple more weeks. Yeah, he so broke presumed, his ankles. Yeah, it was at least six weeks from okay. what I heard initially. Okay. But yeah, uh, breaks you got to be careful with. Yes, uh, yes. for sure. Um, let's see, okay, sorry about that. That's uh, all just right. responding to a message that I got. So, uh -oh. um, is it a good message? It was a question. Let's just put it at that. The Guns defeated the Acclaim to win the AEW Tag Team Championship. I will not say what is next to that. <laughs> there on the run sheet. But apparently, huh? um, some heel maneuver at the end to actually win the belts. They I took thought the feet. only way that the guns were going to win it is if Billy Gunn actually turned on the acclaim. Okay. So when they actually won it, I was so stunned that I was all like, what just happened? Did the referee accidentally count three or something? Okay. <laughs> but I guess since the acclaimed already beat everybody, it makes sense for them to go chasing the tag titles now. Yeah. But really, the guns... You know, they have FTR in the company. The, the question I have, and I, I post it to Aaron and, and I'll post it to you. Whatever happened to return matches? You, you know, you lose the championship. And, and I'm going to say it this way. Back in the day, <laughs> you used to get a return match. It was in, you know, supposedly in the contract. Well, according to a guy named Chief, you have to work your way back up. So you don't get a return match. No, no, You no. have to be there for a certain amount of time, and then you have to work your way all the way up that's a to get a title that's match. A, that's a different. <laughs> that's a different scenario. I think the rematch thing is done in the ninety or like you have to defend your title in thirty days. That's gone. Mm -hmm. Those know? are just like unless you're injured. Up. Unless you're injured, right? If it's a severe injury, they then don't give it. The they don't give it thirty days to see if you heal in then time. You give the belt up, right? Then you give it up. I'm, I'm just. I'm just saying, and I agree with you. When when I saw that match of uh, the acclaim and the guns, and and the guns won that match, I, I that was the first thing I said. Your comment, there. At the That's end. exactly what I said. That's why and, I put it in there. I was like, oh, but but <laughs> what the fudge? My my shut my, the front my, door. But my but then my next thought was, when's the rematch? It's got to be at the pay per view. That's. The only thing that makes sense, you know. Bad boys. Yes. What you gonna do? We Come have on, we have an incoming call. It's always that's the host. Important. <laughs> Should I lock the door? <laughs> Can we move real quickly? Yeah. Change oh, the address. Oh, that was Matt's <laughs> phone. It wasn't. Uh, uh, that was Matt. <laughs> Goodbye. Anyway, listen, they, they had to do so. I think the storyline led to finally something happening that way with the guns, with the split from the dad and everything else. But it seemed like the reaction was very split on them actually getting the titles from 
you, what it appeared. It was um, interesting that that dad came into the ring, all right, and 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 took the belt away, mm -hmm. and then left out of the ring mm -hmm. for the match to go on, and then I forget which gun it was went out and grabbed the belt and hit him with it. I think it was cold. and count to three. Okay. Not a not not a bad scenario, but I agree with you, WTF. It was definitely like the heel way to win and it made sense for him to like cheat to win because nobody really thought it was gonna happen. So so it's I kinda mean, like Jinder Mahal winning the WWE title. <laughs> nobody saw that coming. Uh, but but you know what I'm okay with the good the guns aren't a bad tag team. They can, they can wrestle. They've been trained. Yeah. All right, they they can go. So we'll have to see. Does does uh, uh, do they does the acclaim get a rematch? Oh, they will definitely. Do They're the, going to keep it going because it's do, like. Do the Bucks come into the tag team picture? Or uh, I'm sorry, I don't know the other uh, the other team that. Um, the six in the six man the other night uh, was on the opposite side. The brothers, I think they Lucha could. Lucha Brothers? No, no. Uh, I forget their name, and I'm sorry, folks. Uh, but they, I would like to see them come into the tag team picture also. Uh, Butcher and Blade could come into the tag team picture. So there are a lot of tag teams in AEW. Maybe. They're going to get away from the acclaim and get away from the Bucks and actually make the tag team uh, uh, relevant in uh, AEW. You now. know, as you're as you're tossing names out there as potential tag teams, it, it brings yes, something sir. to mind because we say the same thing about WWE and their tag teams. There's just not enough tag teams, but yet there are plenty of tag teams out there. WWE can dip down into NXT for for teams. Um, and I guess really the question begs to be asked, why are both of these major organizations um, not really focusing on the men's tag team divisions? They have the players. Yeah. They have the time in, in all the different shows to build tag teams. Put them on the road and test them. Isn't that what road shows are supposed to be about? Kind of testing feuds, testing partnerships yeah. and all of that. I mean, they, they're there. Why aren't they being utilized? I'm going to tell you what. We know Vince doesn't like tag teams, but that's another. Tag, tag teams. If, if it's a good tag team, mm -hmm. they can put butts in the seats. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, the wild Samoans, mm -hmm. they, could, how old this is gonna they, go. they could put butts in the seats. Okay. Sure. Demolition for the Hall of Fame. I, yeah. Not Maybe, the headlining Hall of Fame, but in the Hall of Fame. WWE, <laughs> Do you it. need to put them in. Because the Chiefs said so, and they freaking deserve it. One of the best tag teams that's come down the pike. Let's shift gears to one who is perceived to be the biggest and baddest heel in wrestling history right now, or today at least, MJF. Thoughts on his promo the other night? That was wild. I was – he was trying to insinuate it was Liv Morgan of all people because I guess they know each other from like a young age – but I guess eighty percent of that promo was true. He was actually in like a car accident with like his football teammates, not a girl giving him stuff. But that guy is amazing on the mic. Oh my god! He Every is, time his music hits, I'm like, it's usually I'll like watch wrestling and I'm doing something on my iPad, like doing something. But he, I hear that music, I'm like, all right, put this down, shut this off. What's about to happen? Mm -hmm. He's he's one of the best on the mic. I mean, now he, we know he's going to do that 60-minute Ironman against yeah. uh, Brian Danielson after what happened uh, when he finally won that last gauntlet match, which was a hell of a match all into itself. Um, so we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, MJF is probably – who would you say is a better heel right now, MJF or Roman Reigns? MJF. I, I'm, I'm putting the question out there. Don't look squirrely at me. It ain't even a contest. Well, I'm asking. MJF. Okay. I can ask the question. MJF makes everything, like, personal. I think that's why he hits, like, that one chord that you're just like, I cannot stand this guy. Right. Plus, right. even, like, outside of the shows, he plays all this off. Like, as much as he's an asshole on the screen, he's just as much of an asshole off the screen. He believes in the old tradition of kayfabe. Wow. You know? He's, like, the only one. 
I got a hot tidbit of information. Okay. Do you, I'm not going to share on it. Do you know who who was one of the trainers for MJF? Brian Myers. You are correct. Wow. Ding, ding, ding. Did not know that. Yep. Did not know that. Uh, let's see. All right. Because you looked at the picture. I know you. Trained. No, if you trained him at the – Brian Myers has a wrestling school. Hence another. All right. While they look that up, folks, we're going to step aside for our break of the second hour. Uh, we may extend this maybe another spot there, uh, Mr. Producer. Okay? Create a pro wrestling. All right. You are watching uh, Thoughts Kind Anywhere. Don't go anywhere. we got more to do right after this. This is the story of one man's incredible journey from 350 to 200 pound weight loss and his mission to help and inspire others. Aaron Phillips. People are praising Aaron's new book with five star reviews. Aaron's various humorous and wildly entertaining stories portray his rise as a sports announcer, his encounters with exotic and irregular entertainers on the Las Vegas Strip through his long running Vegas Unwrapped radio show and his contagious and positive style of pursuing success. Call now or visit our website or Amazon now to get your copy of Let My Voice Speak to You, stories from a Hall of Fame radio personality. Order now. Thoughts count anywhere. Y'all watching it. This is my new tag team partner, Steve-O, a.k.a. Zeus from the hit movie Friday, and from No Holds Bar. Hello, this is Martin Kassaus, AKA Marty the Moth, and you're watching the Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. Enjoy. <laughs> What's up, man? It's your boy, Seppo Fatu. I'm here with my man, Big Chief. I need you to check out the podcast, Thoughts Count for Anywhere. This is Impact Wrestling's Dash and Chris Bay, the ultimate finesser former Finesse Division champion, and you're listening to Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. Hi, I'm Sean Zavari. Listen to Thoughts Count Anywhere for all your wrestling news. One. It's not the worst podcast ever, is it? It's no. the best podcast. Thoughts Count Anywhere, all your wrestling news, all your hobbit you hey, all your gimmickry. Go on over, listen wherever your podcasts are downloaded. The Thoughts Count Anywhere podcast. I'm the big LG Doc Ellis. That's my endorsement. Booyah! This is the essential character EC3 on behalf of my dear friends at Thoughts Count Anywhere. The podcast for your mind when you need deep thinking about all things sports and entertainment. Hey, what's going on? This is Axe, and I'm smashing the demolition. Hey, we want to invite you to watch every Saturday morning Thoughts Count Anywhere. Hey guys, it's Tessa Blanchard and Ozzy, and you're watching Thoughts Count Anywhere. All right, welcome back to Thoughts <laughs> Count Anywhere. Yeah, buddy. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my. Hey, I, 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 you know what? Yes. I wanted to. By something. the way, thank you to Brian Myers again and, and Ross and Scott and everybody for having him uh, be available to us. So look, you know, he's out on Long Island. I know where Rawway is. Is the next town over for me. I lived there. Matter of fact, my wife grew up on a town on the other side. Her parents wouldn't let her cross the Rawway to come to my city, to, to my town, because we were like on the other side for them. Oh, wow. So it's not an easy drive for him to get out there. So we were just wanted to be courteous to his time. Danny, yes, Danny Moff owned where, uh, oh, where he's going? Where he's going tonight. Right on. All right. The nice. the Rawway Rec Center yep. is one of the best places locally that you can have you uh, events at. You better believe. So, anyway. Yes. Uh, I, I I got some more breaking news. Breaking news. I wish uh, we, I wish we had a teletype, but we don't. Saturday, Saturday, more Saturdays on autographs. <laughs> we have Mr. Josh Alexander. Yes. Miss Deanna Peraza. Yes. Steve Macklin. All right. Brian Myers. Sounds good. Dirty Danko. I like it. Frankie Kazarian. All right. Santino Morello. All right. Is he and bringing Is he bringing the Cobra to sign too? I hope so. I'll take my teeth out so he can do <laughs> that it. That was funny. Oh. That would be that was funny. So anyway, they're going to be the guests Saturday between I believe ten and two. They're going to be signing. Okay. Uh, you know, shifting in, shifting out, and and some of them hopefully will appear on TCH as we exactly uh, as yeah. we heard earlier. And that will be the sports card and collectible show at Sam's Town. Uh, 
Saturday and Sunday from 10 to 6. Mm -hmm. uh, up in the ballroom, uh, right? Up in the ballroom, missions five hours. Uh, we're going to be there Saturday from 9 to 11 doing our show. And then yeah. some gentleman named Aaron Phillips is going to be doing uh, Aaron's Hour. If you and, see him, stop him. All right. And uh, Mr. John. Our, our engineer. We're, we're indoctrinating him to the world of wrestling that he'll, day. <laughs> he'll, uh, he'll be out there directing things and uh, stop by my table and the chief will sign autographs for you. I have a he'll feeling John's going to see Deonna Perrazzo and instantly he'll become a wrestling fan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know my wife. Facts. Uh, I was, where the hell was I? We were doing a show or something. Okay. And Liz Liz went and uh, I won Deonna's uh, autograph. And uh, so Liz went and got it for me. Okay. Well, the next night, she was signing it, uh, Impact, at uh, um, out of Sam's Town. Okay. And I, of course, I went up and got another autograph from her. And of I, I told her the story. And she said, funny. She said, well, Chief, your ass should have been there so you got the signature, not have to send your wife. <laughs> and I thought, damn, I can't win for nothing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. True um, true. True story. True story. So, anyway, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Good. Listen. The bottom line is with, with with wrestling today, there are tremendously good people that we see on TV or in the ring, yep. uh, whether on TV on a regular basis or not. It's how we treat them. I, I you know, I mean, you know what I'm saying. I mean, th there are some, regardless of how we treat them as fans, I'm sure they don't want to give you the time of day. But the majority of them. If you treat them with respect, respect their space as people yeah. and not be, you know, what's around them, then they will give you the same thing back. And we'll be able to talk kindly about great experiences, probably for 98 percent of the performers we see yeah. and are and, and enjoy watching. And I think that's the thing that, you know, we, we tend to forget about that. They are people, too. Yep. Right? Yeah. They've got cooler jobs than we do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good point there. They certainly do. You, know, you talk to them like the regular people. They're like, if you go to a wrestler and you mention nothing about wrestling and you say something about something they like, you'll watch their lies lit up and they'll talk to you like forever. And it's, you, and you know, speaking about impact for a second, you know, we've got a couple wrestlers from here in Vegas that are in the on the impact show. Yeah, Kenny King. Yeah. Chris Bay. Now we got a third one, Jay Vidal. True. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And and the nice thing is with Jay coming back as part of that card in a couple of weeks, that's yes. a nice little nice little perk for him to be part of Impact and for us to uh, yep. for us to see him. Now, as you see here, there's a gentleman over my left shoulder. His name is David. His name is David Orlov. And I've asked him to come down to the studio to take some nice candid shots of us at work and really nice professional shots. Because only phone, only phone cameras only work so far. <laughs> so I don't know. So he's going to take pictures? No, 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 no. Oh, I sure. wouldn't want to do that on my worst enemy. <laughs> so there's going to be no like crazy blue lighting on all of us? Like They'll be pro pictures? Let's just say that we proper lighting. <laughs> Anyway, so that's what he, I've asked him to come but down. Any, so. any, but anyway, you know, I, I just wanted to bring that up, you know, that, that we yes. do, you know, we do have local wrestlers. And, and as far as I know, all of them are wrestling at the Impact Show at Samstown. Absolutely. Right. And that's Even a great was like thing. a day I drove Cody Rhodes around all day when right. he was here for a signing. Yeah. We were talking about like comic books and stuff. Sure. I didn't even like really bring up wrestling and he was going on and on and. It was fun. Again, proving the point that there they're people too. Teams. Absolutely. Exactly. All right, let's let's continue on with some uh, other news at? regarding impact and some uh, of the headlines uh, down there as well. Um, impact, impact. That's on the back side no, over no, there, no, fellas. No. Uh, no, I got my news. It was announced this past there week. We uh, Dirty Dango has signed a one-year uh, contract with Impact. It's been a while since he'd been on uh, available with a with a company in a while, so it's good to see him back in the fold. Right. And it'd be great to see him again on TV, and we'll see him in a couple of weeks. Yeah, definitely. He showed up for like a couple of TV tapings, and people were excited to see him. And then he disappeared for a little while. But I guess since he decided to sign, now he'll be like a full time, at least for a year. <laughs> at least for a year, <laughs> he's going to be on the roster. So. Exactly. That's a good addition to the Impact roster for, for sure. sure. And he brings a lot of experience. Yeah. And. and I don't think any organization is terrible when you can bring good experience to the roster. True. So, 
Yes, sir. Did you did you mention uh, the Kazarian versus Khan match for no surrender? I did not as of yet. No, but you're welcome to. I, I apologize. No, no, no. That's okay. I haven't gone back over the rest of the card yet. But go ahead. Yeah, see, Chief's prepared. I like that, Thomas I, Burnett. If you're watching, this is what writing notes is all about. I, by the I, way, I come in. <laughs> By the way, Thomas is not here because he is uh, uh, currently working his other job cleaning up aisles of spilled frozen peas. Somebody can throw frozen peas at Thomas <laughs> and get pictures. Or we'll buy you a thoughts count anywhere. There you go. There you go. Uh, other news, uh, Matt Cardona, we were just kind of talking about him a few minutes ago. Right. He has actually denied the rumor that he was trademarking the Zack Ryder name. Well, he didn't deny the rumor. He got denied by the copyright people. Oh, he's denied he by the oh, denied trademarking. I'm sorry, denied trademarking. Why was he? Why was he denied? Did it say? I don't know. I probably he didn't say just because somebody said he was. They were wrestling Zack Ryder this week, and he's like, "No, you're wrestling the Deathmatch King Matt Cardona." Because I got denied of the name. <laughs> Probably I'm, WWE. Some with WWE. Well, I was going to say, I'm wondering if there was still something there with with WWE in the name. Most likely. I wonder. When you go to copyright, mm -hmm. you got to go to Washington, don't you? Do you see? Well, you don't go to Washington, but, no, you, but I mean, yes, you, it is research. Yes, you, and you send it in. So they're the ones that denied it. Yeah, correct. Yeah, correct. Well, well and trademarking works the same way because I I have trademarked the voice and the logo and all of that, and I hired an attorney to do it because they have to go through formal filings, they have to check records, they have to make sure that the name is not in use in the areas that you're registering it. Yeah, so, maybe I should do that for the chief. It doesn't hurt to check it out. Hmm. I don't know why anybody else would want the name other than the original himself. So it would probably be available. What do you think? Chief J. Strongwoman. I was just kidding. That's funny. funny. His name popped into my head, too. <laughs> or Chief Billy White Cloud. Chief Flippum. <laughs> Chief Flippy. Chief Flippy. <laughs> Chief, Chief Flippy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crud. Ah, oh, my goodness. All right, where are we going? Impact Wrestling has exercised their one-year option on Deanna Perrazzo. Good move? That's definitely a good move. She's like one of the best female wrestlers on this planet. So having her on the roster is definitely a good thing. So do you think they did that because of losing Chelsea Green in terms of just another name within the female wrestling division that they decided to keep her and exercise the option? It's definitely a good thing to have her on the roster, just like even on screen, but behind the scenes with all these up and coming women coming in. That's, mm -hmm. There's no better mentor out there. You know who we haven't seen on uh, Impact lately? Who's that? Sue Young. She was pregnant. She just had a kid. Is that what it is? Okay. We'll see her in about a couple of months if she chooses to come back. Or like Becky took a year off to be a mother. You know, well, I, I know, I know she's born. going to be doing a meet and greet in, uh, uh, up in Gatlinburg, Tennessee in oh. May. Well, there you go. With one of my friends, Jason Jason Marples, who uh, has a uh, uh, wrestling organization over in, in uh, Tennessee. So, well, that's uh, good. So yeah. she's she's going to be getting back into it publicly, yeah. at least through science. It's kind of funny. Like a year ago, we were at uh, Subway, and I was talking to Rich Swan, and he's like, yeah, freaking my wife has a bunch of pregnant cravings. And he was like... <laughs> Oh, I wasn't supposed to say anything. I was like, say anything about what? As a, like, exactly. I love you. <laughs> well, guess what? It's out of the bag now. <laughs> but that's, you know, and it's out course. of her stomach, too. That's right. Of course. But, you, of course. But, you know, that's the way we are. When we find things out like that, we don't mm -hmm. we don't say it. You know, we keep that part. What's the word? Anonymity? Is that a good word? We keep it to ourselves. Thank you. I like. <laughs> There's like a big difference like between like trying to scoop and, news and like go and behind people's back to say stuff. Possible. And I try not to be that's that person. Good. That's pretty good. And, man. and you didn't said it with your teeth in. Five still. And you didn't lose the gums. No. Anonymity. 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 That's it. Matt Cardona is going to challenge Tyrus tonight for the NWA Championship, which you talked about a few minutes ago, right? At enough said. Go, Matt Cardona. At, the At NWA, going up against really? Tyrus. Down in Atlanta, I guess. Okay. Oh. Who else is on that card? What else happened? Because I don't know. I don't. Oh, I, I saw the poster. I don't just have, for that one. I have no. Okay, I was just. Yeah, I don't know if it's if it's eligible to pull up. Did you see the? Uh, oh, Matt Cardona gets his ten pounds of gold back. The which, best NWA champion of all time. <laughs> which he never lost, right? Because he uh -huh. had to give it up. He to was the injured, injury, right? It's still his belt. <laughs> Absolutely. Are you are you scoping your copious notes to make sure we've covered everything there, Chief? I'm checking it out. In the meantime, let's talk about the fact that Kenta from New Japan will appear in Vegas at No Surrender. That's going to be cool. 
That's what I was hoping, like, more New Japan people are going to show up for, like, the pay-per-view and the tapings. Mm -hmm. They already announced a Will Ospreay match, so I'm really hoping Will Ospreay shows up to Impact in Vegas. I'm trying to think if after the Death Dolls match, uh, Father James Mitchell came out and put put a spell on... uh, um, Taylor Wilde? No, no. Taylor Kelly? No. Or one of the... um, What's her name? Shit. Rosemary. Yeah, Rosemary. But then two girl, two women come in and attack them on the back. Yeah. And they're from NWA. One was Marty Bell, and I, the other one is uh, her tag team partner. I can't think of her name. Yeah. Allison. Allison K. Yeah. They they came in, so they maybe they're going to be there <clears throat> at uh, Sam's Town also. That'd be cool. Yeah. Ronald shares with us in the chat room the first time he met Jimmy Hart, they spent the night talking college football. So going back to when you're talking uh-huh. and you find that common yeah. bond. And he also shares with us that uh, NWA is in action in Tampa, Florida tonight. Tampa, okay. Yeah. Hey, and you know what? I want to I want to shout out to to the to Mr. Ronald for sending us that uh, uh, video mm-hmm. of of the match down in the, you know from a couple of years ago uh-huh. with uh, one of. Uh, Aaron's favorites, Mr. Kevin Sullivan. Oh yeah, that's right. That that's was right. that was yeah. that was good. By the way, Ronald, uh, I haven't heard back from you to find out if the person from the Savannah Bananas, the marketing person, ever replied back to you. I'd like to know that so we can follow up on that when they come out here in May. Did you see where they're going to have yellow baseballs? I did not. Yeah, he sent me he when sh- they come out here. Yeah, he shot me a picture. No, he shot me a picture and. The Savannah Bananas, everything on their stick, it's all yellow. Right. Uh, Rawlings. Okay. They made special ye- yellow balls. Well, it goes back to Charlie Finley back in the day. Better than they blue did balls. All. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> Charlie Finley did orange back in the day when uh, when he owned the Oakland uh, A's back in the 70s. They yeah. tried an orange baseball for yeah. a year, and that went over like a yeah. – Chinese lead balloon, but anyway. Yeah. Um, I, I just you telling me you got shot down? Did you? I just, <laughs> I just, I just, I just thought I'd bring that out. You oh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. He's trying to save me from my comment, by the way. Uh, anyway, I know. I don't usually do stuff like you know why? I don't why? Know why? Hey, come and get shot down. Uh, we we got to go off script for a minute. <laughs> okay. When are we ever on script? Why do we don't have a script? No, why? Do, why are they? Why are they considering? Building the baseball stadium down by the Sahara. <coughs> Isn't there enough traffic and congestion and all that good stuff down on the strip now that we can't get around? And hi, Scott. Stop and think about it. I've been I've been saying that for look, months. I look, thought we've actually talked about that here. Look, we did. look, look at what's going to go on now with the Golden Knights playing home. How that traffic's going to be all messed up down there. So we're saying for a while it was they were going to tear down the Tropicana and put it there. So within a three block radius would be a Legion Stadium, a baseball stadium, and T-Mobile Arena. Could you imagine if there was three events at the same time? Exactly. Well, exactly. Here's the thing: right? you have to leave Wednesday to get to your game on Saturday. And then what's the, what's the other place that's opening up here real soon? The the round place, the Sphere. Yeah, the MSG that's going to be opening. Well, up. that's over on Koval behind the convention center. But yes, but that's a fifteen thousand seat facility. But you're right; it's a nut. I, listen, we've talked about it here. I've talked about it on other shows. The fact that they're even looking at that area is utterly ridiculous because I want you, I want to paint this picture, okay? Talk to me. <clears throat> Most night, yes, sir. The reason they are doing that and putting it there uh-huh. is because they're going to do the same thing with the strip that they did with downtown Fremont Street. There will be no vehicular traffic on the strip. It will all be public transportation. Well, 
Well, and the only way to get there so that you have to buy. All right, for those who couldn't hear what John's comment was, and I don't know how, how clear he come across. We should he, give him a handheld. Well, he's got the other one back there. <laughs> it's his whole board, for crying out loud. He should know what to do. But anyway. He's in control of the audio. So his, 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 comment, his comment was the fact that they're going to turn the strip yeah. eventually into Fremont Street in terms of closing it all and make it pedestrian. And maybe that is the case. I no, don't know. Bullshit. But But here, here's the thing. Here's Okay, so picture this. Most 7 o'clock games, evening games, start at 7.05 first pitch. Yes. Most people like to get to the stadium early. They tailgate. They like to get inside early, watch batting practice. Yes. So let's say the stadium opens up at 6 o'clock. Imagine, if you will, 5 p.m. rush hour traffic, people going up and down 15, trying to get off of Tropicana just to get home from work, on top of 30,000 to 35,000 people trying to get to that baseball stadium. My contention has been very much this. Move five to ten minutes north of 15 into north Las Vegas between the end of the strip as we know it to where the freaking Speedway is. They know how to get 150,000 people out there for a freaking race for NASCAR. Oh, and by the way, something called EDC. Okay, we're used to doing this. One casino, I don't know, station casinos, for instance, who's used to building properties off the main strip, okay? Go out there, be the anchor casino, get your stores out there. Guess what? Build it and they will come. <laughs> Why are we doing this to the strip? Because you know what? Tropicana, as they're calling it, this Tropicana exit off of 15 with what they're doing. Guess what? In my humble opinion, nobody else, <laughs> nobody else may or think this. I think they're doing it because they're going to eventually build it in that area around Tropicana by the Excalibur. The other problem is where the frig are they going to put all this parking they need? They couldn't do it for a 65,000 seat football arena. They built a 2,500 seat parking garage. Where are we going to put enough parking and learn our lesson from Allegiant Stadium? I'm out. <laughs> Don't get me started. Unless, unless <laughs> Aaron's rant. Unless we said before, uh, or at least I have, they put overhead rail. We we should have had that for years. No, I to totally, move people around town. No, I totally. Oh, but agree. they already have a part of it, though. They have the monorail on the back side. All they have to do is extend what's there. See huh? what? See what? What I. Was you, told you, Elon must have funded what, what I was told was that North Fifth from up where I live, right, all the way down mm -hmm. was going to be super. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not happening. When I sold timeshare, they were supposed to extend the monorail down to the airport, it wasn't supposed to end where it does. They, uh. You know, so it's supposed to do, so, and then you have the Musk thing underground. Yeah. You know what? We need for just we need better ways to move our people that live here. And so a Safe, rail system- Safer too. Well, think about what they have in Washington. Washington, D.C., they have the rail that moves commuters, that moves people who live there. Why aren't we doing the same thing? It takes 45 minutes to get from my house up near Summerlin down to the other side of town in Deep Henderson. Why should it have to take that long, going around 15 to go 20 miles? Uh, it's crazy because of the traffic. All they've got to do is go over towards Yankee Stadium and see the rail right over that goes right into Yankee yep. Stadium. They they can go up, they can study it, they can build it. Well, like Scott says, Scott Hosey's in the chat room, and it's a great point too. Taxi cabs run this town. They are never going to do that. He also, oh, and Norberto, by the way, our friend Norberto Rivera will be stopping yeah. by the booth uh, for Impact Weekend. It's his birthday weekend. So make sure you stop by and see us as well as we do our uh, TCA show from there as well. As, as, as I've said before, and it's all about the money. Of course, of it's, course. Yeah. They want to keep. Is. They want to keep people on the strip. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, Legion Stadium ain't on the strip. Nope. Industrial Boulevard, which is the original name, ain't on the strip. Decatur, whatever that is, ain't the, the Dean, Dean ain't Martin. the strip, folks. Dean Martin. God. It is crazy. We went to the 49er Raider game. Yeah. If you, you, everyone pretty much parks it like Mandalay Bay, Luxor, Excalibur area. Mm -hmm. And you got to walk over like that big bridge. And it's yeah. just a sea of people. Yeah. Well, SummerSlam 
two summers ago when they yeah. first opened the place, right? right, well, right. People were stopping a mile out because they couldn't get there. Yeah. You know, we so, got real smart. We were like, Garth got us a party bus. Yeah, so was, we literally went past every ounce of traffic and they <laughs> dropped us off right at the front door. Well, there you go. If you're going to go to Allegiant Stadium, you get a party bus. That's right. For anything. Split it between friends. It's cheap and you don't go through any traffic. But I heard wait, but I heard waiting for the ride back though. Garth shared was a nightmare afterwards. Getting the getting the limo back there was a miscommunication. But whatever, I digress because why? What I choose to. Anyway, you know what time it is. Happy birthday! It is to time you. to celebrate Happy some people's birthday birthdays. To you. That's right. Happy you're celebrating. You. If you're celebrating birthday today, February 11th through next Friday. You are celebrating your birthday with these people within the world of wrestling. And then some today, the 11th, Ken Shamrock and Hernandez. Tomorrow, Super Bowl Sunday, the 12th, One Man Gang and Crush. 13th, the innovator of violence, Mr. Tommy Dreamer. And my niece, Gabby, by the way, it's her birthday as Happy well. Happy birthday, Gabby. February 14th, Viscera slash Mabel, whoever, however you want to remember him, King Mabel. I actually met him, and man, he is a big, was a big dude. February 15th, Rick Swan, Travis Banks, Hugo Savinovich, Jenna Maraska, and Mickey Keegan. Wow, that's a long list on the 15th. I wonder what happened back then, nine months prior. And on the aforementioned, uh, <laughs> right, February 16th, Gangrel, and on February 17th, Jimmy Jacobs, and Ricardo Rodriguez. Happy birthday to all of you out there celebrating with these people. Please be safe as we want to make sure you are back watching us next week. And by the way, please, please, please go to the Thoughts Can Anywhere Facebook page. Jot down somebody's birthday. Jot down an anniversary, a shout out, whatever you want. We will pick it up and be more than happy to do that during this segment. Give a shout out on your behalf. Like Vimeo, we should charge for that. <laughs> like Vimeo. You want a shout out? Send us a buck and a half and we'll get you a shout out. But anyways, happy birthday for all those folks. What's Vimeo? Uh, it's a video service where a lot a lot of wrestlers do it, where if you want to pay like 50 bucks, uh, your favorite Sergeant Slaughter can wish, uh, can record a happy birthday to somebody. This you is, you can't get it on a flip phone. No, you can't get, can't get it on a flip phone. This is Sergeant Slaughter, you maggot happy birthday, you know, something like that. <laughs> Someone really, struck a call. Well, only because of what he and John were talking about, and it's the first name that popped into my head. So, anyway, you're lucky you're actually sitting in that chair right now. Why? Is there a kendo stick under the table I need to worry about? I got a fucking twist. Before you'd even cock it, I'd be out of your way. <laughs> All right. Don't Any, touch me. Anything from the world of wrestling that you want to talk about that I haven't brought up or that we skipped on the run sheet before we go Where are we going? to pop culture? Because tomorrow there's some football game or something, which I'm sure Ronald yeah. will be taking our selections on wait, wait, wait. and jotting them down. Did we miss anything? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Did we skip anything? Tony, that Tony is, uh, Khan said the video game for AEW oh, is coming out next month. With, finally? It's been coming. They said it's been coming out for like a year, and it's magically going to come out the same month the WWE game comes out. There you go. But if you're into games, the AEW game said they're, they're going to do something kind of cool like Tekken. Where, like, if a wrestler changes their gimmick or a new wrestler comes in, they have the ability to, like, put more people in the game later on. Really? Like, WWE has, like, DLC where they announce, like, five different packs. And that's literally all that's coming out. So, if, like... Somebody debuts or somebody does like a big thing. You have to wait till next year to get them in the game. Get in the update. But with the AEW game, they're gonna have it so like that game will be out for like a couple years and nice. So they can add like FTR into the game or whoever debuts soon and right up. So they do. So WWE does it that way so that they got they you got keep you hooked. Yeah. So you keep buying it. Yeah. Any ideas to what the uh, uh, price will be for the AEW game? Has that been announced? It's like sixty, seventy dollars. So it is. I still remember Pong. That's Ron, all I Ron care about. says he's got the pen and pencil for the prediction. Oh, he's ready to write down <laughs> our picks for Super Bowl. I'm telling you, Tom's going to have a hard time getting his job back here with Ronald the way he's on it for us. And he's my vote's already for Ronald. Ron, Ronald, I'm taking the Philadelphia Eagles. We haven't even gotten there yet. Well, well, I wanted uh, I wanted to make sure my vote was counted. Breaking news from the NBA: Some guy named LeBron James is going to be pretty good these days. I heard he's getting better every year. 
You think so? He's got a future in basketball? Yeah. Uh, it was nice to see Lou Alcindor come out on the court. For those who don't know, that's Kareem cool. Abdul-Jabbar. He beats the all-time scoring record, 38,500-and-something points. Yeah. Um, they project he's going to probably go well over 40,000 by the time he retires. And this could huh? be a record, literally, that may never be broken. He, uh, he did good for himself. He deserves, <coughs> he, you know, hey, Kareem come out on the court, presented him the ball. <laughs> Yes, he did right. And they, they're not the best of friends, according to reports. Oh, no. Uh, Norberto says that uh, Scott's taking the Chiefs. Norberto says Chief isn't picking the Chiefs. Hey, you know what? That's a great yeah. point. No. I'm boycotting the rest of the show. Philadelphia is closer to stupid New Jersey. Yeah, Philadelphia. Don't call my home Philadelphia <laughs> kicks San Francisco's ass, too. Ronald says, Matt, have, Check. You, have you seen the roster for WWE? 2K23. I've seen part of it, but I don't no. think they've released the whole thing yet. As far as I've seen, if they have, let me know. I haven't seen it. I don't know anything about it. With him winning, with him now getting the scoring, you know, points record yeah. and all that, yes, sir. This debate will go on for all eternity. Talk to me, Michael Jordan or LeBron James, as the quote-unquote go. It has to be. No, I'm, I'm, all due respect to Michael. Yeah. In in Mike's era. Mm -hmm. He, in my opinion, built the Chicago Bulls. Okay. Mm -hmm. They went on to win championship after championship. Mm -hmm. Him and Scottie Pippen. Right. And Rodman the, and Thomas and all and the, the And the greatest NBA coach of all time, mm -hmm. Phil Jackson. However, comma, you got to say LeBron's the greatest of all time because he's broken. A record that held was held for how many years? I don't even know. Since I did eighty five. Eighty five. So the only argument that people are making against him being the goat is the number of titles he actually has. Because he's gotten to the finals what ten times, I believe it is, or something like that, and he's gotten four of the ten or three of the ten, something like that, uh, where Michael has more than that. And okay. so that's the only argument people have to go back and forth. You're only as good as the team. Okay. And and as as Somebody always <clears throat> said to me, there's no I in team. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know. If like you, Kobe Bryant says, there's an M and E in a minute, motherfucker. <laughs> so, if, so, if, so if you say, so if you're, oh. if you're saying it's, piece, it has to do with championships mm -hmm. and not personal accomplishments, I then, yeah, Michael, you know, there's no argument. Can anybody break? Do you think anybody at any time could break the scoring record after LeBron? Yeah. There's only one name that I'm hearing that's coming up because of how how young he was when he got into the league, like LeBron, and that's the guy out of Dallas. Oh, Luca. Luca. I can see that. He was, you know, he's he's with he came in almost at the same age that LeBron did. So in terms of years, I mean, he's playing 22 years now to get where he is to break the record. Yeah. You know, who can sustain most most of the players? One, two year in college before they come out into the NBA. Starting at 19, he came right out of high school, did LeBron, and so did, did Luke. He's got that young start. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Is anybody going to break Cal Ripken Jr.'s record? Probably not. Not with the way they manage baseball nowadays. Oh, true. That's not. That number of consecutive yeah. days, you know, games played. I still think look Jordan's how, the GOAT. But still, look at how long that record stood, though. I didn't hear what you said. I said, I think Jordan's still the GOAT. Not a great owner of a basketball team, though. Not a good white side, not a good Chicago White Sox. I mean, I, I, look, I look at it this way. When uh, Michael was in Chicago, uh, you know, they they put a great team together. Okay. LeBron was on super teams and still didn't win champions. And we won you, the first one down in Miami. You know, you, you go down Miami, but you go to Cleveland, you know. Went back to Cleveland to win. There was nothing there in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And that's why he left There's in the first nothing place. There in Cle but then you come to LA and you know he, he I won't say they had when him and Black Mama were playing together, they were great teams. But you look at their team now in LA, it's they're trying, but it's not there. Thank you. Um, 
So, you know, we're comparing apples and oranges. If you go with the statistics of player versus player, point wise, you got to say, in my opinion, you, you have to say LeBron. There's a lot more going into the GOAT than just who scores the most points, though. Well, and that's why that's why one of the biggest differentials between the two of them yep. in that argument is the number of titles. Yeah. That's really the only thing that's glaringly different yep. between Michael and LeBron. All right. Uh, we mentioned earlier, we touched on the MSG sphere. That is scheduled to open up later on this year in September. Supposedly, it's going to primarily be for concerts and such and, and not really be a sports arena, but I'm sure that will change in due time the big highlight is the outside of the sphere is the television all into itself where they'll yeah. be able to to show what's inside whatever they want to that's huge to be able to have something like that uh, i think it's going to supplant what the uh, excalibur not the excalibur the pyramid with that bright light does mm. now you'll be able to watch stuff on outside of the sphere uh so you can sit outside and watch it whatever they project i don't know if they're going to actually do what's inside out there they may do a little bit of it the place is sold out let's say uh, they may want to do that, but still will be a, a unique venue all into itself. I want to see a wrestling event there. If the entire thing inside is like a big LED screen, they could do some cool sure. stuff. With the, that would be interesting. Maybe, Absolutely. Maybe they charge twenty dollars outside for outside. Who knows? See, it, but where little, it is though, there's not a, a little extra money. Where where it is located, there's not a whole lot of seating space like a park. I mean, where they're located, uh, they're on Coval and. Um, Oh, Spring the, Mountain, or yes, yeah, Spring yeah. Mountain, yes, not yeah, Spring Mountain on the oh, other side there. UNLV. There's Down. rumors that U2 is going to be like the first residence. Yes, either. yeah, I, I saw that as well. So check that out. Last but not least, that's right. Tomorrow is the Super Bowl, the last NFL Sunday, which means the following week, spring training opens up, and that's all I care about right now. <laughs> yes, sir. We know, Chief, you got the Eagles. I know that. Yeah, you can do that when we're done. Okay. Um, Eagles. Yeah, Eagles. I'm going Chiefs. Okay. Patrick Mahomes is winning another championship. I, I saw the stats uh, comparing these two teams. They're dead even. Everything dead even. Points scored, of course, record, uh, quarterback QBR, I think, was whatever it was. Everything, everything was was equal. One, one wish I have is that it's a solid game. That's a good game. No blowouts, close game, everything else. Um, I don't think Mahomes is still going to be 100%. Um, I think the two weeks off has helped uh, uh, Jalen Hurts with his shoulder more than the ankle because uh, you still need to walk around and go to the bathroom and you still have to put pressure on that ankle, even though he could be on crutches in a boot. As much as it pains me as a Giants fan, I, 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 Rich, you're going to love me for this, Mr. Cash, but I got to take the Eagles. It pains me to do that. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> but the, the, it's good. I just, be wrong. It's I just want it to be I just want it to be a good football <laughs> right. game. Same. I don't want tomorrow I don't want tomorrow just to be remembered for the commercials. I want to see uh, I want to yeah. see I want to see a 30 27 game. Chief just wants to see Something Rihanna. Like Who? <laughs> Who? Rihanna. Oh Who's my that? lord, that's your halftime half entertainment. Show. Oh, I, Which will take 30 minutes. That's anyway. when I go to the bathroom. That's right. That's his potty break. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I do want it to be a, a good game. I, oh, that's all. Let it be a good game. I don't want to just I remember it for things, purposes man. of I, I, uh, I, of the commercials. All right. Two quick things before we say goodbye there, Mr. <coughs> Chief. Hey, first one, the, the, puppy, the puppy bowl. It's going to be on three channels tomorrow at 12 o'clock. That's important. Go support the puppy. But the and big, Jerry Lawler. But I only the, like Jerry Lawler's puppy. But the <laughs> biggest one. And the one I'm most honored at is our good friend and professional wrestler out here, Sin Bodhi. Congratulations on becoming a U.S. citizen yesterday. Absolutely. Shout out to you, Sin. Congratulations, Sin, for sure. Um, that's good. That's good stuff there. All right. Um, we're about to wrap up uh, a few minutes early next week. Uh, who's on next week? I don't even know anymore. Dirty Dango. Me. Dirty Dango. Chief will be here. Maybe Thomas will be back. Matt will be here. We know John has to I'll be back here. I'll have to flip phone with me, folks, so call in. Next week, bring in the can of string. Can, two uh -huh. cans and a string, uh -huh. would you? You'd shit if I did. Uh, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> you All right. know I'm that crazy. Let's wrap it up here, Mr. Matt. Final thoughts for the day, please. Everybody have a good, safe week. Stay warm. Yeah. Still chilly outside. Yeah. I can't wait for the heat. Yeah. But... Uh, enjoy your week. Tell your loved ones you love them. Tomorrow's never promised. Yep. 
Go Chiefs. Yep. And today's a gift as a present. Chief. Give them a hug. Tell them you love them. Because Chief says so. Everybody have a great week. Absolutely. Uh, one hour. Join me at the top with uh, special guest co-host George Miklos as we entertain our guest, actor, stuntman, martial arts expert, Mr. Anthony Pagliaro, also known as Anthony Thunder. He's in a new movie okay. as well as other TV projects. No, not you. Um, okay. So make sure you join me you know, in an hour for that. With that, as always, everybody, be kind to everybody. Why is that? We're all a half. See you next week right here on Thoughts Count Anywhere. See ya.